Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Collegiate R6. It is playoff season. We have a great match for you tonight. I am Jagged. Joining me here tonight is Connor. Connor, how are you feeling about this match we got going up? Well, you know, I'm really excited. And it's not just because, you know, it's the playoff mood, but because the stakes are big here, Jagged. This is a best of three lose and you're out situation. So the stakes are high for these players. And we're going to see maybe if there's a bit of nerves, see who's got those steely mentalities and we're going to see how well they can come out and play right away yeah very important game here it is the playoff round going into the quarterfinals for the premier playoffs joining us tonight we have nc state and texas a&m two states out of the south one from north carolina one from texas some boys down in college station they're looking to make it upset here against north carolina it should be a good match uh but we do have our map bands ready so off the bat we had a consulate and clubhouse banned out by NCSU and Texas A&M, respectively. Now, personally, after looking at the uh, at the map bands across the last season or so, that really isn't much of a surprise. Consulate and Coastline are pretty much auto bans by NCSU, so that doesn't surprise me. And A&M has banned clubhouse first at every single opportunity that they have. We're going to be going into Villa and Oregon, two maps that uh, NCSU and Texas A&M are very, very fond of and very high win rates on those maps leaving us with a ban on cafe and theme, leaving us for a decider on coastline, which should be a very interesting map to end the series due to the fact that North Carolina auto bans it all very frequently. I guess they decided that, hey, you know what? We'd rather just take it to coast if it needs to. And maybe they're dreading that, maybe trying to get it out in that two games, maybe 2-0, which is quick, because uh, we all know coastline can turn into a bit of a monkey frag fest if you're not careful. So maybe they're trying to avoid that. Maybe they think, you know what, we're feeling up for it today. But you're absolutely right. Villa, Oregon, we see it all the time. It's going to be interesting to see how these teams kind of take the other team by surprise. You know, these maps are pretty common. Maybe they do some crazy strat. I don't know. Uh, I can think of a crazy strat with Oryx jumping up a hatch, getting a free pick early, doing something insane. But I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what's in store, Jagged. Yeah, that third map should be a doozy to say the least. I do imagine CDAPS has been working up in the kitchen, getting his boys at NCSU some strats for that map. It's important to note, though, that AM has a 0% win rate on this map. The only time they've played it in recent history was against Akron in week number five of the CR6 group stage. They lost it 2 to 7, which, I mean, it, while it's not a great scoreline for AM, it is important to note that is Akron's playground, one of the maps where you just don't take them to. Uh, you know, that map went through and Akron punished them for it. So I'm sure NCSU has watched that match back since it is a game or uh, since they lost to a team that NCSU has beaten in recent history. They did beat Akron just a few weeks ago, but I think about a month ago now, uh, earlier on. But I do believe uh, you know, our lobby is almost ready to go. That's just something very important to note. Uh, NCSU has been on an upstreak lately. The only team they've really lost to is Purdue. They've lost to them about three times in recent history. The only other exception to that loss is a loss to MTU a couple of weeks ago. Kind of just like one of those like fluke games, you could call it. I wouldn't really call um, it out against NCSU, really. That's not really a game that they should have lost. But at the same time, it's not really one I'm going to fault them for. It's just kind of a, I'm just going to take it as a fluke. But a and has had a lot more mixed results. And against some of the better teams, they've had a lot worse defeats. So it's going to be time to see if a and can pick up the pace when they need it the most, or if NCSU is just going to walk through them. Oh, absolutely. And coming in here, if you're NC and you're pretty much the favorite here from what, what you said, maybe a little bit more on the upside, you're trying to just get calm, get situated in the game, get a round, get two rounds, maybe get off to a good start and... You're the underdogs here. If you're in and them, maybe trying to get off early, you know, get that first map, put them on the back foot. They have a tough task in front of them. But again, those nerves come into play. Whatever team is more ready to play in these single eliminations might just pull out the win here. As we see the Thatcher ban early, not much of a surprise. Jagged and Jackal as well. Pretty common ban. Yeah, and you know, on Villa specifically, a &M has played it five times uh, throughout the CR6 group stage, and they've won it 80% of the time, winning it four out of the five times. Meanwhile, you know, NCSU, they've played it four times in recent memory, but they only have a 50% win rate. So if this, if there is a map that a &M could beat NCSU on, it could be this map. And if they win this, if a &M wins this map here, I could see it, see it go to that three-map series on leading us to Coastline. 
but it's going to be a very uphill battle for a and and they're going to have to get they're going to have to get their foot on the gas right off the bat. Oh, absolutely. And we talk about uh, being ways to get that upper hand first. You're right. It, what you said, uphill battle, it definitely is going to be one. So if I'm looking towards these roamers or these uh, entry fraggers on AM to get these early picks, you know what I'm saying? In this case, it will be the roamers, but getting that 4v5 early, putting the N uh, NC, my apologies, on the back foot early, getting that numbers, getting the momentum, kind of having the wind at their back, the faster they can do that, the better their chances are. And it's easier said than done, Jagged, uh, just to sit telling your roamer, go get an early pick for us and give us the tide. Ain't so easy, but well... The game isn't easy sometimes. Yeah, I know. And especially having that Valk and that Mirror off the board, it's a lot of information that you could have otherwise up for your uh, people, your players on the roam for AM that they don't have anymore. Interestingly enough, we do see a six pick come under that IQ coming out from, uh, I believe it was from Pod there. It's going to get off the sledge. So you're losing some nades. Sorry, it's Anarchy. Oh, man, I was mixed up on which side was on in the attack first. But we're going to see NCSU on that attack first. NCSU, though, they're going to six off that sledge. So less nades on the board. And I'm not sure. Maybe they're aware it was going to be coming to dining first. But there was no pulse that was shown or six picked onto. So the IQ, at the end of the day, might just be for that GA Anarchy. He's a very talented gunner. He came in from T3 at the beginning of the season. And he's really brought NCSU to a bunch of new heights and allowed them to kind of flourish inside of their leadership roles and inside of their gunplay roles. Because NCSU, they're not really lacking any gunplay. They have plenty of gunners. Taco, Anarchy, and Predator are all extremely good when it comes to those firefights. But uh, in a and they're going to have to learn that real quickly if they haven't already. Because otherwise, if they start getting a little bit too aggressive, NCSU might shut them down real quick. Isn't that kind of a, a nice thing to have? If you're NC and you have one of your be better gunners on the big G8, all the bullets, all the time in the world, three-speed IQ, maybe it settles you down a little bit. All right. Uh, we got a, we got a one heck of a gunner with one heck of a weapon on our team. It's always a little bit of a momentum boost. But you are right here. The sledge might have been nice in this situation. I can think of a few situations where being upstairs, having those nades, really wreaking havoc from above might have been useful, but I mean, hey, I, they're, they're in the quarterfinals and I'm not, so I'm going to trust their opinion here. But if it does come down to a gun off, you are right, a &M might have to be a little bit careful. Yeah, I know the saving grace is the fact that they have nine breaching charges between Taco, Anarchy, and Predator apiece. Drew, though, he's going to pop an air jump on that bathroom door. And Dow is going to get a little bit aggressive and start spraying some bullets his way. Drew, though, he's going to fall back off. And now they know that there's some Astro pressure coming up in here. Though, NCSU, they're just going to start opening up these floorboards here inside a Master. But soon, they're going to have to start pushing into that side of the map and try to get that control. Chief, he's sitting under the hatch and C4 is up. Is it going to catch anything? No. Not a single HP of damage has been taken by NCSU. At the end of the day, a little bit of a waste of a Nitro Cell, and now Chief's going to lose his life to Predators. So, opening pick as NCSU has flooded the bomb site. Then on a 5v2, you're going to have to call your roamers back to site. Pod, he's moving into Memo. Doesn't spot the one, but he has been spotted out by Taco inside of Memo. And Taco's going to pop Ooh. another off. Double kill there for Taco and Predator apiece. Now it's all left up to Dow in a 1v5. An extremely quick site executed as they... You know, they recognize, hey, we can just walk in through here. You saw they had the place open between Laundry and Pantry. NC Jack, he's going to finish it off with a kill on the Dow. That's a post plant and a quick round one for NCSU to start this match off. Isn't that the start you dream of? You're thinking about playoff games coming in a flawless round on site early. Get the diffuser down what, just clean. That's the start you want. If you're AM, that's definitely not the start you want to jag it. I'm not going to lie to you, but... You were right on site quick. We saw that GH has come in and uh, there's a few gun kills there really early. And uh, just like that, had site, had bomb, left in a possible position for Dow. And maybe the mix up wasn't quite worth it. You know, some teams try to do a little bit of a non primary site, but they're going to go to Aviator Games now. And I'm looking to see if this Chonka will stick. Uh, no, wait, there's still hope. No, it's going to be Malusi. Uh, maybe next time, folks. But. Malusi will add a little bit of intel, make the Attack defenders' lives located. really annoying. And if I'm attacking and I'm walking through a wub and trying to take a gunfight, it doesn't sound like a very fun time to me, Jagged. 
No, it's definitely not. Those wubs are extremely potent, you know, slowing you down, making a lot of noise, immediately giving away your position, and making it to where you can't really move as freely as you would like. I always hate trying to walk into Aviator when there is that wub that we saw Pod putting on top of that maps table. It's one that can be very hard to deal with if you waste all of your explosive utility at the early part of the round. We do see five explosives here coming out from NCSU. Anarchy, he's going to stick that IQ once again. So no sledge, no nades, but... You do have enough explosive utility to deal with pretty much everything you have on the board from AM. You have the two bubbles, you have two shields, and you have three wubs. I you know the wubs you don't don't require the explosive utilities. It'd be nice to deal with it so that way you're not forced to uh when you're you get to knife it and because that you know can distract you from your gunfights. Uh but, you know, you have to pick and choose what you're going to use that explosive utility on. And you can't risk burning it in any of Dow's ADSs. You have flashes of plenty on NCSU, so that shouldn't be a problem. But you're going to have to figure out what is worth getting rid of and what can you live without dealing with. Yeah, that really will be the... That will really be a big thing, and I think in this match, Jag, is going to be how the utility is used. When you have two teams that, with so much skill like this, it's the little things that really add up. The little, maybe even just one flash being burned where it shouldn't have been, that can really sway around. And I think back to all the great matches I've seen, and all the times I've failed in plays myself, and just thought, wow, if only I had that one flash that I burned downstairs on that ADS, or some situation like that. It's going to... This siege is an intellectual shooter, as I like to say, and we're gonna have to we're gonna see which team comes up with the Ooh. better strategy. Is Taco's gonna get that early pick, and just like that, five v four already not looking good. Yeah, Chief is looking through those floorboards behind the bar. Taco though, he saw the floorboards being he saw the floorboards open rather, and decided he was gonna peek him right back in. Well. He doesn't lose those. Sir Ella off the board real early. And now here comes Taco on another swing. But Praise is going to refrag it off onto Predator. So kill's still in line. But Pod is going to take out Taco as soon as Praise is down. So technical 2v3 here for AM. Make it a 2v2. No, C4 is going to go wide and not take any damage. Though, but Ooh, Anarchy, no. he's just going to walk up the stairs and walk into sight, taking out Smoke. And he's going to take out third. That's Pod down. NCSU a strong showing in round number two as well off the back of anarchy's push up into the bomb site who is this guy holy moly <laughs> wow make me feel a little bit jealous here already it's pretty dominant start i 100 percent agree with that peaking the ash you know that that hole in the floorboards down main stairs can get you an early pick but i guess uh, it didn't work out that time and just absolutely bombarding site i like the quick level of play here jag and i like that they're hitting site hard fast and early a lot of times you see teams uh, especially on the attacking side just dilly dally a little bit too much and they don't give themselves time to do anything and see so doesn't have that problem at all they're just sending everything at sight and the refrag potential as we just saw there is huge every time one of them drops it seems like the person that got that kill is just down immediately yeah, you know, like you said, a lot of teams really will take too long trying to clear a map and trying to get the map control that they need underneath their belt. NCSU, they're not wasting any time with that. They know how Avila works. They've played it quite a lot and against good teams as well. So they know how to get their clears down on Villa and they know that they feel like they can, you know, beat AM here on this map. They did choose to come here, so they have something cooked up for a game here on Villa, and they're showing that they're not here to play around. They want to get into that round of eight for these playoffs. They want to continue their hot streak going into the CR6 finals. They want to win this match, and they want to win it in two. Five seconds left. Yeah, I wouldn't want to take it to Coastline, because even though this game, like I said, was an intellectual shooter, Coastline could go either way. It's just one person has a bad day and one person having a good day, and that could really just change the game itself, Jagged. Like, Coastline is a very... I don't want to say volatile map, but it's very uh, interesting, let's put it that way. Getting this done in two would be nice. Having the momentum, too. You, you said a lot of, they want to do this, they want to do that, and that's 100% true. And I think especially when game when teams are this skilled and this close, it's just the team that wants it more. So we'll see what they have cooking up right now, though. Definitely want to try and take a round here. If you're at... And, and an M, and M, sorry. You want to try and take a round with them, get the monkey off the back, get it started, maybe just chillax and say, hey, these guys aren't unbeatable. And somewhere along the line, Predators took about 
you know, 60% of his HP. I'm not exactly sure where that was, but it's not going to matter because Taco, he's going to find the first frag onto Dow. It's your Jaeger off the board. One of your roamers over here on this side of the map. It looks like it might have been your only roamer as a Malusi, a pod, has made his way to red stairs. Here goes Chief, though. He's swinging out into benches, but he's going to get spotted and immediately make his way back into trophy or into statue, rather. He doesn't want to get caught out too early. Pod, though. He could prove big here in the late round if he can manage to survive underneath the bomb site. He doesn't have a C4 in his pocket anymore. He did use that we saw earlier in the bottom, uh, in the, in the first floor underneath that study door. So he has no explosive utility, but if he can get a good flank off, then he could provide some massive play. Chief, though, he's going to even the scoreline back out on the Predator. That's your Zofia off the board. And without all of their utility used, that could prove big in the late round. As we still have some of these bubbles active on the board, not to mention the Cade Claws. But oh. Chief, though, he's going to trade with Taco. So it's a 3v3, and all of a sudden, AM look like they could take their first round here. Wow. All right. Well, uh, that's definitely what you want from your statue player, isn't it, there, Jay? You just sitting there, his job, you know what, trying to. Hold off that side of st that study study sided take. Back Excuse me, that's a little bit of a tongue twister. Trying to stop that gets two free picks, takes two fraggers off the board. <sighs> that's definitely what you want to do. And he he's done his part. He's gotten his two kills here. We left in a three v three. Forty seconds left. Got to rush into sight here if you're NC. And this is exactly what A and M want. They want them to have to rush into sight. Jinro down below might set up for a big flank here. That might be huge. Gonna try and get in master. Well. This is where you earn those cookies. This is where you earn those cookies. Oh, I'm already getting stressed out. This is game one, round three. Holy moly. Okay, Junior, are you talking about how he could be a big player here? He has that C4 and he's made his way underneath, though. Smokes are off the board. C4 goes out. Is it going to catch anything? No. Pod's going to pick it up with two. And now he's going to pick it up with a third with the pistol. Because why not? You're out of ammo, but that doesn't matter. You have a sidearm anyways. You're not an attacker with a gone six. And he's going to clean up that round for a and And it's going to put their first one on the board. So good looks for a and inside of that statue round. But they're going to have to... They cannot rely on two players to get all of the picks here. They're going to have to even out the workload. And they're going to have to play better as a team if they want to get more rounds on the board. And CSU, they've already taken two in this attack half. Make it one more, and you're looking down the barrel of a 3-3 split on your defensive half side of Villa. That could go either way, but with NCSU going under the defense with the momentum builder like that, that's not a place that you want to be if you're Texas A&M. Never. Especially, a lot of teams prefer that defensive side, and you know, they can just kind of sit back and let the attackers kind of make the mistakes and capitalize on them. So, I think you're absolutely right. That one round... Might make big of a difference here. They have the confidence. Pretty good win there. Pretty dominant. But you are right. You kind of have to spread the wealth a little bit here. That was an absolute amazing round from Chief and Pod. They're able to just really just go out and make the plays that their team needs. Just get them off the ground. Get that spark going. And as I take a look at the site here, I'm interested to see how what they're going to do for that main take once again. Because we saw last time that NC just walked right up main stairs and got that 2k and got another pick and got that one pick from the bar hole that we saw. How are they going to try and defend that? Are they going to try and change it up? Or are they going to stay, you know what, we're just going to stick with our strat and see what works? They have Kaid, so they, it will be a little bit tougher to get those walls on Electrified. But I'm looking at this main stairs here. I'm expecting Ash to run right up them once again. Yeah, Taco's a very aggressive player. and He's that primary entry for North Carolina State. They've been playing very well with him at the helm of their fragging power with Anarchy and Predator to boot as that secondary entry flex playing between the two. But the drone coming out from NC Jack has worked extremely well already. C4 is going to come out from Pod extremely early. He's not going to catch anything, though, as he makes his way back to the red stairs as he had been droned by NC Jack. Their droning has been very well so far by Anarchy. He's going to miss Pod inside a memo, but it's going to matter. No, because Pod's going to shoot the drone and give away his position anyways. He's going to spam a few bullets to the wall just to see if he can get a cheeky little wall bang, but it's not going to matter. He's been pushed into the depths of the first floor, now into the depths of the basement as he's started to be hunted by NCSU, though they don't want to waste too much time, so they're just going to wait for his exit. It looks like Pod is now making his way through the basement. Anarchy, or Taco rather, he's just waiting here, and Taco wants this pick. He knows someone wants to swing him down here. I don't know if they're where, where inside of the basement Pod is, but for the time being... And uh, Taco is just going to wait here for that exit. 
One of the best parts about being a caster is having those outlines, and just like that, Taco's gonna pick off Pod. He wasted a little bit of time being downstairs, at least kind of kept Taco off of sight, which, I mean, is a sort of blessing. Roamers, their job, obviously, picks are nice, but is to waste time. Is that enough of a time waste? I guess we'll have to see, but one man off the board, 5v4, minute 20. Oh boy, and Taco's coming in. I like what you said, though, that Taco is really the head of this fragging force almost and he's been playing super aggressive and that's almost what you want on your ash you got that insane gun you have you literally run at the speed of light just a great entry fragger has a lot of potential in that op to just run in and make plays and having a skill player like taco sitting at seven kills already jagged and he's not showing any signs of stopping he's gonna do a little prone spray anarchy is gonna i did he get him or was that anarchy from the side i'm not quite sure but just like that they have control of 90 hallway already and here comes the final push jagged yep in a 3v3 now is jinra's gonna pick up taco but it looks like someone has already made their way into the bar it's nc jack he has the diffuser in hand predator he's gonna take off chief that's your my off the board now it's all left up to hinro and dow c4 needs to come out here but i don't know if they're aware that the bomb's going down and now it's all up to hinro with that aug in hand he's gonna pick off one on nc jack sees the player inside of 80 he's gonna go for the swing but nothing's gonna land Fred's gonna take his head clean off with that M762. That's gonna get another round on the board for NCSU, and they're gonna go up 3-1 on this split so far. Well, that's a that's a momentum stumper, isn't it? A little bit just walking in the site. I can never I always love seeing a good execute like that, just hitting site and just going in and making plays. It's super satisfying to see, you know, your fraggers just walk in and say, hey, you know what? I think I'm better than you. I'm going to take this area right here and just walk in and get it done. Super satisfying to see. Absolutely love to see it. And I see a pulse now. Will we see a little bit of a, some floor shenanigans? We will not because it will be switched off to the Malusi. Have a little bit more intel with Maestro, though, and a little bit counter intel with Mute. If you're A and if you're A and M, man, that, that's a tongue twister for me today. I apologize. If you're A and M here, you grab the one round. Just try and take one more. If they can make 4-2, obviously not the best situation, but I would take it. This NCU team taking any round you can on on your defense might be worth it. Yeah, and a and needs to start getting their defenses under control here fast, because if they end up going down 5-1 on their defensive split, it could, it, it'll be very bad from going into their attack cap. Now, obviously, this could just be a very attacker-sided Villa. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to work out. Sometimes Villa works out that way. It could be an incredibly defender-sided map. It could be an incredibly attacker-sided map. Or it could be a pretty even map, all things considered. Though, with how NCSU is playing, I do think it's just that they're playing better than a and is so far throughout this matchup. And uh, and a and needs to get some stuff going. They can't count on Pod to clutch up all the time. They need some work coming out from Dow and Praise. Praise is on this goal with this Vector. I'm going to expect him to try to get a couple more kills throughout this first half here. He needs to put in a little bit more work. Because he's been on some more of those anchor rolls throughout this these, these last few rounds. But it's not going to matter because Predator's already going to take it out. Pod, he was sitting inside of AV. That's the opening pick off the board. But... Dow is going to get one before being, being immediately traded back out. And we're only 30 seconds in, and three people have already died. Very quick progression so far through this round. Oh, you love to, you love to see stuff like that just really quick. And you got to give credit to this NC team. Their communication is superb. That was one of the quickest refrags I've seen in a while. Just always there to be able to get the refrag potential. You see a little bit of bullet hole cheese with that vector. That's unfortunate, but I think you're right. That vector is an absolute weapon. Some people dislike it. I think those people are wrong. That gun is absolutely nutty. And you're right. Bomb now that right pod there. is gone, you don't have your quote-unquote carry anymore. Everyone's got to try to have to step up here. Siege is a team game here, Jagged, and everyone needs to do their part. 4v3, definitely still winnable. They have topside control, but there's a lot of time left. This might get bad really quick as we're gonna, they're going to start opening up upstairs and setting up these sight lines. What, are they, what can they do, Jagged, at this point? Maybe a big flank? Uh, I mean, right now, you're going to have to rely on your site presence not crumbling. But with at the man disadvantage and you're being taken out from above like NCSU is doing, there's going to be a lot. There's going to be very few places to sit inside a site. And speaking of that, 
an untimed rotate comes in from Chief and he's going to be taken out by NC Jack. He's playing on that Nomad, more of a support role than what he used to play. He used to play more of the hard reach, but it's been relegated over to Drew now, allowing NC Jack to shine a little bit more than what he used to. So it's all up to Hinro and Praise. With 50 seconds left, it's definitely doable. I've seen crazier clutches, but a C4 is going to come out from Praise. He's not really going to hit anything. There was nothing really around for it to hit. And now he's just going to lose half of his health to his Goyo shield being popped. And with 40 seconds left, it doesn't bode well if you're an AM fan. Oh, this is this is one of the ones where you're leaning forwards. Oh, no. Okay, you could sit back down, AM fans. Sorry to get your hopes up. Just like that. I kind of jinxed them. Was that a caster curse? I apologize. That might have been a caster curse, but just clean, clean play from above. And like you said, that early pick on Pod, just giving them upstairs. <sighs> that one's tough. That's tough to swallow. And now you're staring down that potential 5-1, which is never a situation you want to be in. Oh boy. Oh, I saw the Blackbeard. I, got, I was concerned for a second, but looks like they will decide to do something very similar. Just taking one round, Jagged, might be enough for two. Get a little confidence going in. You are right, though. I've seen Villa be very attacker sighted, and maybe AM has these insane strats that'll define the meta. Well, maybe not that much, but maybe they will have these insane strats to take a few rounds. But can't think about that yet. You got to take this one here. It's going to be tough. It's going to be very, very tough. NC has just been gunning down those entry players. Taco, eight picks, and he's. He's not, like, passively getting those eight picks. He's rushing in. This one's going to be tough. Let's see what you got for your master uh, trophy t uh, hold here. And um, this round's big. This might... I don't want to say ahead of time that this might be one that could potentially break the back, but if you're not careful, 5-1 is a really tough lead to come back from. Yeah, and this was the one site that a &M has managed to win so far. You saw inside of round number three, Chief managed to go big with a double piece inside of statue on that statue at the doorway and you had pod clean it up in the dying seconds because a &M was able to make or was able to waste so much time out of the hands of ncsu they didn't give them time to set up early on in the round they had they were forcing them to waste time trying to clear out and trying to get those picks and because of that a &M was able to take the round based off of a last second crunch but I don't know if NCSU is going to let that happen again this round. You already see Taco's inside the dining. He's going to go for this, this soft destruction already. I think it's just to try to get what might be on the wall. There is actually no wall denial. I'm not sure if they maybe just not be aware of this. Or they're just trying to get some holes open underneath though. Pod, he's inside of the basement. He could try to go for a play here. But NC Jack is already droning. I think Pod heard that drone. And now he's a little bit worried of where that might be. Taco, though, he's going to walk in and he's going to pick off Praise. So that smoke player I was talking about last round, he's already off the board. And with a really big pick for Taco, that's a lot of denial off the board for AM. and oh, poor smoke. He really shines in those late round situations when he's got those gases. I asked him what's in the canister. He's still not getting back to me. I think it might be a secret. Or regardless of that, though, those absolutely in impeccable tools i think smoke can almost be underrated he's extremely useful even more so it looks like Dow might be looking for a pick but he's gonna sight away gonna try the flank jinro's gonna get one oh Dow, this could be huge getting that pick from below denying a little bit and he does have paw there maybe for a little bit of an assist this could be huge ladies and gentlemen taco oh man he might be walking in he might be he might be in a pretty bad position here I mean, actually, I'd argue that, talk, or that Pod might be in a pretty solid position due to the fact that he has this flank potential. You saw him, and I believe Hinro is sitting like around the bottom. Good job droning here, Jagged, though. I, I do like that. Pod is going to be able to get that one pick. That's definitely a start. That is definitely something that you want early in these, or mid, later in these rounds, even. Swinging here, being aggressive. Chief, you do have the vector, but I don't know if it's that much magic, but he survives with his life. There's a little bit of damage. And now he's wasting even more time. Yeah, there's only 40 uh, seconds left in the Hinro round. Has that big Alda. He really used it to his advantage, and he's using it to his advantage. You have a lot of bullets there. If you are holding left mouse button, your chances of getting a kill at any point are not zero. And that that gun can hold that left mouse button a long time. You're gonna be down, not be able to confirm. 
Yeah, you know, <laughs> the final 20 seconds, a flurry of kills is coming out between the scoreboards. But we're back to an even man count, but it's technically a 2v1. Make it a 2v9 oh. as Anarchy, he's going to finish off Dow. Drew's going to fall after being down. So a good round coming out there from NCSU, even though it may have seemed bleak earlier on in the round. A&M, they played the start and the mid round there extremely well. But unfortunately, I think they just got a little bit too aggressive there in those final seconds, they had a, they had NCSU right where they wanted them, but a few untimed swings and a few poor decisions led to NCSU being able to swing that back in the dying seconds to their favor. And now it's going to end as a 5-1. It should have been a 4-2. A&M should have won that round, but unfortunately, they gave it away, and that's not a round that you can afford to give away. Yeah, I did like it, though. I liked the little bit of the change up there, Jag. We saw that big, aggressive play up in your face, getting picks. It just did not work out, which is unfortunate. But it is showing that A&M may be being a little bit adaptive. And 5-1, bad lead. Uh, or, or, sorry, not a bad situation. It's a very good lead for NC, but not very good for A&M. But it is not impossible. They have a little bit. It, you never want to be down six to anything, but they have a little bit of a buffer. Let's see what their attack has in store. They have the Maverick. Can work a little magic with that. Zero as well. Well, Jagged. All right, do you believe in the comeback? Uh, against NCSU in a five in a five one score line, I don't know if I would say a comeback is really in the cards here for AM. They might just be saying go next. Uh, it might be one of those where you just have to try to do your thing on your map choice. We are going to be seeing Oregon coming up in map number two. Could be in as little as two rounds. Could be in as many as, you know, seven or eight, depending on if this goes to OT or not. But that's a big ask. AM has a long way to go. There's only one round to they're on the losing end of a match point here. They need to get their butts in gear and they need to start going now. And was that a default cam that we saw sitting up on the board? Anarchy, he got on cams. A and M, what are you doing? Those are those are those are immediately shootouts. Those are those are freebie points. Come on, you got to get your points where you need them because you know everyone knows you need your points right now. But uh, you know, as it as it's going, NCSU has a lot of intel over that between the default camps, between the drones. I saw Taco, he caught one. It was sitting over inside of, I believe it was inside of Trophy, and another default camp that they're not even going to try to shoot. Ping's going to come out though. Shots going to be fired. But this default cam has still not been shot. Finally, Jinro is going to turn around and see that that blue light is glowing inside of that Astro ceiling. He's going to finally take it out. But it doesn't matter because a minute's off the clock. But a lot of intel has still been gained. Oh, boy. I don't know why they're not shooting those cams. How else are you going to save up for an AK? I guess they're going to have to eco another round. But in all seriousness, I think you're right. It's Maybe they're trying to do so, too much. A&M obviously not in a good position, and maybe they're trying to do too much, have these elaborate strategies, these crazy crossfires, and forgetting some of the simple things. I know sometimes I forget to shoot the default cam purely because I'm thinking about this crazy, uh, insane strategy that I'm going to pull off. And spoiler alert, if I'm doing it, it usually never works. But you're right, maybe getting a little bit careless here, and careless really does kill, as Drew is going to take one kill, but get refragged by Chief, back to 4v4, minute and 10 seconds, the reinforcement will go up, well, it's turtling time, 4v4, this is it. Yeah, so some good utility usage coming out from Dow, Dow there, managed to push the player off a of 90 by destroying that Goyo shield, and I like the zero pick here coming out from Praise, it could do, could do a lot of work intel-wise, even to pop a Goyo shield, or maybe one of those mute jammers. But here comes a swing from Predator. And it's not going to be warranted. He's going to be taken out by Pod. Pod the most important player on this A&M team by far. He's been having to put up the numbers. With Hinro trying to crawl it up from behind. The rest A&M though they're not doing good. But Chief's going to find his fourth of the match. Onto a nade with NC Jack's name on it. So now they're looking in a really good position. Now with a 4v2. Make that a 3v2 as Taco is going to take off Pod's head. Plant though. Attempt out. C4 out, though. Is it going to attach? Yes, it will. And with Anarchy picking up one, it's now all of all of the praise with 15 seconds left to go. He hasn't been able to find a whole lot, but Anarchy, he's going to sit him down. NCSU, match point in map number one. Uh, well, uh, uh, I don't think that's how, uh, I don't think that's how NC State drew it up, but you'll take that. It wasn't looking good there for a long time, but clutch C4, few clutch kills, few clutch swings. Oh boy, that 
not only does that put them at match point, Jag, at 6-1, that gives them all the momentum. That's that's a stolen round right there. And I, I know that stolen rounds really do make the difference. One stolen round can really change the momentum of the game and win you the game outright. And that's the first blatant stolen round that I've seen. And, oh boy, if you're A&M, you have quite the battle in front of you. Yeah. Five rounds in a row for a and to make it to overtime here on Villa. It's definitely something that doesn't necessarily seem like it's in the cards, but I have seen crazier things happen before. a and though, they're going to have to start working real hard here. They are on attack, but I'm not necessarily sure that the lineup they're bringing is one that I would consider a best choice here on Villa. I'm not a fan of the Maverick on Villa, especially considering the fact that every wall that you might use that Mav Torch on is explosive underneath you have those wooden floors against every single main wall on this master wall on that vault wall on both aviator games walls into study everywhere that you might use that maverick you could be blown up by a an extremely well-timed mitro cell or even just some impact grenades to boot so i'm not a fan of the maverick maybe bring something else you have the habana you had the ace last round Maybe bring another, you know, you, there are different ops with nades. You have sledge with, and while your hammer might not be extremely useful on these upper floors, maybe bring something to help clear out underneath. Maybe bring a buck. I've seen buck be extremely potent in many players' hands here on Villa due to that vertical capability. As long as you can clear out the bottom floor and you can start getting things working up though. But Dow, he's finally going to find the opening pick. And that's the first opening pick for a and in this game. It's going to take out Drew, but that hasn't been extremely active on the scoreboard, but also hasn't died an extreme amount either. So it's going to be, but it's going to be a big pick for a and because now they have the man advantage once again. And this is something that they could work with. They have the momentum too. There's a lot of time left, 4v5. Maybe the, maybe one of the roamers now has to rotate back to site in case this is a really good situation for them. I do agree, though, that the Maverick pick, pretty interesting. Maybe uh, maybe Chief has a very big respect for people who do floors and doesn't want to destroy them, but the well, Buck pick would have been nice. That Assault Rifle 2 cannot be slept on Jagan, and just like that, oh, there's another pick, and this is starting to look really good for a and 5v3 can't get complacent, though. His boat, it looks like all of NC is going to come back to site. They basically have to. They, they're down two men at this point. 1 minute and 40 seconds. Gotta start pressuring site. Looks like they will. Well. Oh, no. Oh, I, I have this. I have to say, I think a lot of this that A&M is getting these picks is just over-aggression coming out from NCSU. You see Taco. He's going to try to do something since they have that Mandas advantage. They need to get something back in their favor. But NCSU has been over-aggressive this entire round, and it's costed them a lot of picks. Predator, he's going to finally find a trade. But the bomb is now being planted by Brace. There's something he can do. It is plant, and the plant is going to go down. Pod's going to take out NC Jack on the swing, and Dow's going to finish it off on the Predator. A and M with their second round in the game, and something that they desperately needed to try to get back into Villa. It, it almost didn't look like the same team there, Jagged. That was wow. A and M just coming in with straight force, getting the picks, and I like what you said. Over aggressiveness on the by NC State, maybe that lead maybe getting a little bit to them you you should never really have ideally you should never have the mindset oh we're ahead i can make risky plays you never know when things can happen you never know when comebacks can happen you never know when a spark can happen a little bit of over aggressiveness there and a and m really did punish them they're not going to go out quietly and they might not be able to win this round jagged but if they could grab a few rounds here get some confidence going up in the map too that might just make the difference yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be definitely be the difference because it's not really about how much momentum you bring into map two if you're that losing team, but it's the kind of mentality that you can bring into map number two if you're that losing team. Because obviously, the winning team is gonna have the aggression going or the not the aggression but the, uh, the the momentum going into map number two, especially if the fact that they they string a lot of rounds together. But if that losing team can keep collected and keep calm in that first map loss, then that could be what they need to really recollect themselves and go for a win in map number two. We are going to be seeing Oregon coming up soon. That is a and is map pick. It's a map that they're pretty fond of and one they've won time and time again. So it could be it could be a very close map number two in contrast to map number one. But AM, if they can't make the comeback here, 
uh, if they can't make the comeback happen here, then Coastline may be on the docket if they can keep their heads together. You almost have to at that point. Coastline, interesting map, but I guess they will have to take that map too. Maybe being a little bit more familiar right here. This has been... A, I, I don't think it'll be too controversial if I say that this has been a little bit one-sided looking at the score, looking at some of the performances on the board. Maybe just need to get past this, but it's not over till it's over, folks. So we're going to see Doa using some drones. It's going to get shot immediately. I always get nervous in these situations because I really try to put myself in the position of the players. You're down. Maybe really looking for that opening pick. It hasn't been common for an a and but getting that opening pick can really set them up for a round like they just had. Do you have a decent amount of burn too and an extra hard breach charge in case something really goes bad? But once again, the Maverick as Taco is going to get a big pick early. That's not what you want. Yeah, so you do have that hard breach charge still, like you said. But your hard breach has died. You do have cheap, but that's not really going to do much. And now Pod is going to go down. Mm. As NC Jack sitting inside a memo with that shot. He's going to take him out. Anarchy is going to pick up another one. And now it's all left up to Chief and Praise. The Zero and that Maverick have a lot of work to do here on Villa. And a 2v5. And C4 is going to go out. And it's going to land on the Praise. And now it's all left up to Chief. It's going to do a little bit more damage on NC Jack. But with a minute and a half to work with in a 1v5, this isn't one that you really expect him to win. It might be time to say GG go next as Anarchy drops onto the floor. And he's going to pick up one as Chaco. He's going to go down. But Predator, he's going to finish it off. And NCSU with a 7-2 scoreline. They're going to take map number one. Well, you'll definitely take it up 1-0. They really didn't. It almost like they stopped playing there. That one round before, they lost it. They just came back and... The difference in team play was almost staggering they just came out and just absolutely raffle stomped good refragging ability there late too nc state really showing why they're the favorite there jagan and you have to appreciate some of these performances 12 kills for taco 11 for anarchy some pretty good performances out on the board you love to see good players make great plays and if you're AM, what do you do well, I mean, there's not much you really can do right now. You just have to say, you have to put Villa aside and say, okay, that was their map pick, but now it's time for our map pick. You're going to hope that a &M has something up their sleeve for Oregon to make this a competitive match because Villa was definitely not competitive. NCSU ran away with it, and they ran away with it extremely early. They had every single opening pick except for that second to last round that we saw that a &M managed to win their only attack. You know, they, they won one defense too, but there were definitely a couple rounds on their defensive half that they tossed. They had man advantage in two of those rounds that they kind of just gave away in the last few seconds of each one. And it allowed NCSU to get up their staggering lead on their defense or on their attack half and made their defensive half pretty much just a piece of cake. They just kind of had to coast and wait for AM to fall into them, into their trap and allow ncsu to just kind of vibe really i mean that's really all it came down to the end of the day you saw the vibes were high that's why the over aggressions came out they're getting a little bit cocky but at the end of the day ncsu when you're up by that many rounds you can really you can kind of afford to do that as long as you don't make the mistake of doing that too often uh, i mean you can re you really can just get away with it shows too that they're loose right and that's definitely scary in a big playoff series like this if you lose you're going home well i guess they're already at home if you lose you're out i guess would be more accurate to say in a big series like this they're loose they're ready to play and we saw we saw some insane performances out there but i can i just can't give enough credit to taco there doing his job as an entry frag and you're right when you had such a dominant attacking half all you could do is kind of sit back and wait for AM to make the mistakes they did nc state big win good for them a lot of work to do if you're AM down 1-0 all you can do is focus on the next map you have gg go next is how we always call it but we're going to be seeing map number two in a little bit we're going to go to break though to give the players a little bit of time to get some water drink up a red bull or something but uh we'll be back right after this break Thank you. 
I'm on my own, broken alone. I feel the rain crashing down. All around this empty town, I'm searching for the lost and found. But you don't care, you're unaware. Keep moving like the scars aren't even there. It's in the air, like a blazing flare. Points in blaming you, you did not know. Oh. I thought you were the one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to game two between NC State and AM. NC State did get the better of AM last round to go up one nothing as we will go into Villa. I am once again joined by Jagged. How are you feeling, man, going into game two? Also, we have Oregon here as AM's map pick, but it's going to be one that they need to win fast. They are starting on the attack here as NCSU has opted to start on that defensive side. AM does get their defense in overtime, so not the end of the world, but they're going to need to rack up some attack rounds here on Oregon if they want to make it to coastline. Otherwise, we'll be seeing them go out in an 0-2 fashion, and that's not where they want to be. That's not where any of us want to be. We want to see some competitive games but they're going to have to get their acting gear real quick. Otherwise, NCSU might just run away with it here if any if that uh, if that defensive half from Villa was anything to be... Uh, any, if you want to take anything from that, at least. Since NCSU has wrote to his, you know, stayed on that defense, I do think that momentum is going to be carrying over for them. Villa's Oregon. Sometimes the play style is a little bit similar. Sometimes it's not. Oregon, a pretty linear map at the end of the day. There's a little bit of vertical play but not a whole lot when it comes to some of the bomb sides, especially the basement. There's really no vertical play except for a couple of those hatches. But something that's not going to be in play is that, well, my, we saw Chief on it inside a villa for those aviator, those aviator bomb site rounds that they don't, you know, and it, it didn't win them, but Chief was playing that, my, for that. But on Oregon, he's quite a menace when it comes to trying to get rid of some of the utility between those castle barricades and those shields. I assume Anarchy is going to be running one, but Predator, he's going to have two of them for sure. So seeing that Wamai off the board is going to do a lot, as is that Mira, a lot of intel off the board. And what is this? A Montane pick. 
That's going to be very interesting to see. Oh, yeah. You love to see the big man with the big car door trying to help out his team and maybe praise. Monty really does make it a little bit easier on the frayers, doesn't he? He can walk up, get intel. Hey, there's a guy in this corner. You have the advantage on a swing. It's, it's nice that you mentioned vertical play, though, because you are right. On this site, there is a little bit, of, little bit of vertical play. It's kind of the main strat right now to open up that kindergarten window down below and ash charge down below to get the utility. But since Kaid was not banned, that's going to be a little bit tough for Ash now or whoever is going to be taking that task now has to go underneath, find that Kaid charge, and if they really and destroy it if they really want to get in. It looks like they might not even double rotate it there. Jagged. I, this might be a little bit interesting strategy. Maybe we'll see a little bit of a mix up here. Yeah, so NCSU, I've seen them play like this in the past. They are going for a master bedroom hold just to try to deny some early presence into the map from AM. and And it's something that they've done in multiple games before. They played it, I believe, inside of the Collegiate R6 Invitational, powered by Esports Certified. We saw them running it against a few teams inside of that in, inside of that tournament, and it has made its way as a mainstay, you know, uh, strat for this team with those castle barricades sitting on the master side to top main uh and i believe you know, on that that game's window i think it was there was one there as well so it's gonna be all about trying to clear out the map but Hinro, he's probably he brought his drone downstairs but he didn't see the roamer the timing was not in his favor on that one and there's a player in that basement that's gonna be a menace in the late round if he doesn't get spotted though it's taco on that castle something we've seen him do before but now he's been spotted out but he's gonna do a little bit of damage on the pod take a little take about the same in return but now the monte of praise is pushing him by himself why is your monte pushing alone this could be devastating for AM if they lose this pick praise is going to try to lock him in a corner but taco doesn't really seem to care the swing's going to come out and pod is going to take down taco it's your castle off the board pod has been dropped to about one hp so taco he did his job he wasted a lot of time but it's a very interesting uh roam clear there coming out for <laughs> AM. it's the new uh fragging monty meta it's uh one of those korean builds that you see in like other games yeah it's the new meta regardless though you are right that stall definitely what you want. You did waste a lot of time out in minute 15, even though you have the Monty, makes your life a little bit easier. Gotta push in as NC Jack's gonna get that huge pick just like that. I, one thing I do have to call back to though is, I think Yinro really meleeed that castle barricade open. Oh, that's awful. That, that's that gotta be a worse feeling, but Monty disoriented, stuck in a 3v3 Ooh. with Praise getting that equalized. Oh boy, one minute left. This is to set the momentum here, Jagged. It is, and Praise has been down as Hinner has been taking about 25 HP. Praise can be recovered here, but a swing could come out from NCSU that could net them another kill. And with less than 40 seconds on the clock, they're in a real desperate time there for, for AM. Obviously, NCSU may have one more Echo Drum, but they have no more explosives. So it's going to be all about gunfights here in the last few seconds. It's Praise going to take about almost half of his HP as he tries to rotate back into Trophy. a and Nate out into Attic. It's not going to catch anything as they're just trying to figure out how to get into the bomb site. Drew, though, he's going to swing Hinro, take him out what was left of him anyways. And now Chief on the rappel needs to get in the site, but it's not going to matter because Anarchy, he's going to take out one and Drew's going to finish it off on a praise. NCSU is going to take a strong round number one off the back of Taco on that roam for so long there. I like to call back to something that you said when we were talking about what happened that first game here, Jagan, and you said something along the lines of there was a lot of situations where AM were in that you would consider good situations where they were up a man with a lot of time left. And we saw it there again get an early pick, 5v4, decent amount of time, but just always seems to collapse on them. And they have to figure out some way to stop the bleeding a little bit, but they were able to get something done. They were able to get a few picks. Be, we're able to take care of the roamers, get on the site, have a little bit of pressure. It's a start, but NC State, just the better team that round, and they're going to take round one on defense. Hopefully here, if you're a and it goes a bit better than 5-1. Yeah, we are going to see that Monty go clean away. Praise didn't really work out for him. He did manage to get a kill, and I think it was might have been a one-tap from the sound of it when he got that pick. Uh, I believe he's onto the smoke there um, of NC Jack, but he's going to be running the Ying now. So it could be more of a quick style execute coming out from 
AM, or it could just be a late round execute that's just going to utility dump into the bomb site. We have seen both of those by Ying players on this map. Uh, I mean, Ying has really come into the meta a lot on Oregon with different teams up in T1. We have seen different pro level teams start to run for uh, on these basement attacks specifically due to the fact that you can just dump her candelas into sight or if you're trying to take control of pillar or something it allows you to be able to get a lot of control inside of the map extremely quickly but that might not be the right play here as ncsu is going for more of a uh, extended hold inside of meeting and kitchen this is something that calls back to oregon back in the old days before it was reworked you had a lot of players trying to hold a lot of teams rather trying to hold down that mid section of the map because it enabled it cut off so much rotation in old Oregon now while you have it here though it still cuts off a lot of rotation since you're holding that kitchen as well you cut off that rotate from kitchen to meeting in that green hall but at the end of the day if uh, if NCSU gives away their control real early then that could be a really big for a &M. but it's not going to happen though Pred he's going to be peeking out a window and it's going to take down down so once again Diana going down early and a lot of untapped potential for that Danish operator just going out the window. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> it was muted. Well, anyway, as I was saying, um, I really like what I'm seeing on defense here from nc state they're not just sitting on site and just turtling and waiting to be attacked they're extending their site out his price is going to ying in and he's wow. going to go and get a pick good for him oh boy oh boy things are escalating very quickly it's just like that nc state's on the back foot i was complimenting him about how uh, uh i think they were compliment oh wow i was trying to compliment them on how well they were holding site but from like outside but i i guess it devolved very quickly and just like that a and M just bought and rushes the site and it works out for them, Jay. And holy. Well, you know, I was talking about that Ying and how, you know, pivotal it could be inside of these rounds here. And we saw that utility dump come in with a site execute through freezer. Normally I would expect that to come in through bunker uh, or inside of pillars itself, but it doesn't matter because praise, he's gonna yig into deep freezer. He's gonna take out the player sitting behind that box. I believe it was anarchy there. And then he manages to swing into sight and pick up, or swing the hallway rather, not into sight specifically, but he's going to take out the second. And that really just opens the line up for AM to flood the bomb site. And NCSU, they kind of just crumble there. They didn't have the, the right players in the right position that they needed. And that Ying proven deadly for AM. And it's going to allow them to get onto the board here. It looks like they're going to be playing this map a lot stronger than they were on Villa. I'd like to apologize for that a bit of a rambling mess. I was taken aback, but you're absolutely right. It almost like a different mindset out of AM that round. Just decided, hey, you know what? We have the Ying. We have a few more aggressive ops. Let's just go in and it worked. I mean, there's no other way of phrasing it. You know, just we saw the members of NC State just drop like flies. One pick, one pick, one pick. Just like that, they took the win. Oh boy. I. You always love to see good rounds like that. They had a, a lot of time on the clock as well. They had the numbers advantage. There was aggro on site. They were taking real estate. What, what the point I was trying to make was is that NC State was doing a good job of extending site and, you know, having more control off the map. But looks like looks like a and found the chink in the armor there, Jagan, and just said, you know, you know what? If you're going to extend out the site, we're just going to hit the site directly and kind of just all crumpled from there. Yeah, when you're attacking a bomb site that you see a defense set up like that, sometimes it's the best case because you know there's going to be players playing above, but that could mean that they're weak inside of the actual cavity of the bomb site, and that's where it could matter the most. If you can get that early pressure in and make the defenders come back to you, then you could get a real good pick. The Yana clone, though, he's going to go in, and it's not going to spawn out Taco. He's completely unknown here, as we, I do believe it was Drew that shot that clone from kids. Dow, though, he's going to take a little bit of spray damage through that, through that kid's ball, rather. And now Taco, he's he's just going to continue to swing. And he likes to swing, and he's going to do it well. So now with a minute left to go, they need to get some of this roam clear on the board if you're A&M. But it's not really happening right offhand as the drones aren't coming out full force. Chief, he's made his way into T2, though. And now those holes that are sitting on that meeting wall, on that stage wall could be the difference maker for uh for ncsu at the end of the day oh absolutely 
every advantage that you can take, maybe a little hole here or just even something, maybe just a broken softball that just favors you a little bit just by the way it's been broken. Every little thing could come into play in Siege. That was a very clean Maverick work right there. I got, you gotta respect the, the uh, artist a little bit, just like that. Dow is gonna get another pick, gonna be flashed, Malusi and all of that's not looking great for him, but Site is downstairs, a minute 20, and finally able to clear some of that top hold pressure. Oh. Still no real onside pressure, and just like that, another pick, 4v2. Oh boy, this has changed tides very quickly. Chief and Pod in kind of a very tough scenario here. A little bit of time left though, Jagged. They have a little bit of time to work with. Yes, but Chief doesn't know that there's a player sitting inside an armor. The nade goes out to try to dispel anyone coming up. Man, it almost cut out Anarchy there. You saw it did about five to 10 HP off of him, but that allows Chief to be able to pick up that diffuser and make his way back into trophy. But Taco gives away his position inside of armor. And so now they're worried about the flank up the main stairs. Two impacts go out. I believe they were from Anarchy. I'm not quite sure where they were. Might've been underneath. But with 35 seconds left to go, AM has no time. And Chief, <laughs> that's a Goyo shield. You can't just Mav torch it like that. It's going to take so much of your health, 50 HP of it to be exact. But they're not looking good with 20 seconds left to go. They have to find a way into this bomb site. And NCS new, NCSU rather is not willing to let them do that. They have the player on the bottom floor. It looks like it might be Taco. He made his way back down. And here comes Pod into the, into the security room. Spots out the Goyo, but can't land a shot. And Taco from below. C4 goes off. Chief's going to get one, but it's not going to matter because Anarchy's going to clean it up anyways. And CSU with a very convincing round number three. Well, uh, that's a pretty good play right there. If you're those upstairs players, how much time did they stall there? It was close to a minute by the time that... It was close to a minute there by the time AM even considered really going downstairs there, Jagged. That is what you want from your upstairs players, stalling so much time. And the fact that they were able to just get picks too just worked out on top of that. If you're AM though, you can't exactly just say, oh, we'll just be faster, because then you'll make even more mistakes. Very dominant round by NC State. Good play by them. Now they're going back to kids' dorms here, but if you're AM, you were able to take one round. Another one shouldn't be impossible. It's only 2 1. Still a lot of game left to play. Yeah, and a 4 2 split on Oregon attack isn't the end of the world. It's quite normal Defenders to go 4 or to go 2 4 on your attack half of Oregon. But considering it's your map pick, I would hope that your team would go 3 3. That would be the optimal. You know, it's not the optimal one, but it's, you know, I would, is what I would hope would be the most likely outcome since it is your map pick. I know NCSU is extremely proficient inside of Oregon, but that shouldn't be any reason why A&M should be any less proficient. After all, they wanted to come here, so why shouldn't we hold them to a higher standard? They've gotten that one round, though, and so they're looking pretty good so far. That last round wasn't necessarily the best showing from them, and now they're going to have to contend with this master hold once again. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be tough for them to take it here. I mean, it, it started off really well the first time they did it, but it kind of collapsed at the end. Maverick will definitely be able to get that tower wall open with no real issue. That's one of the perks of bringing him here, Jagged. But they've been able to get the walls open reasonably consistently, but executing after that has not gone 100% a, a smooth, let's say, for them here. But they do have backups. They have the ace as well to help. Capitao also has that hard breach charge if need be. They've got they've got pretty decent ops here to do it, but now it just comes down to the execution. Jiro is already going to have a bit of a tough time, but Predator on Death's door already here, Jaga. This is not what you want. Yeah, he got a lot of his health taken off as you know, Hinro took out his toes quite actively. And the play come here from top main is going to catch out Predator. Finally, he gets forced out by a Maverick hole. He, he was on death's door for so long, but now Taco's been taken out by Pod underneath. So all of a sudden, we're a minute in, and AM, they're up by two. But we have seen this before on Villa. We have seen AM give away this man advantage multiple times. So not the end of the world for NCSU, but definitely a good start of the round here for AM. They've already gotten more opening picks here on Oregon than they did on the entire side of Villa. So good start. But NCSU, they're getting ready for a retake of their own bomb site. It's not going to happen. The is going to go for three as he takes out Anarchy and NC Jack. Oh. And a flawless round coming out from AM. This is exactly what I was expecting to come out of him here on Oregon. 
Well, you said you said it right. This is their map. You would try and hold them to a higher standard. Uh, I think, I think in that round they met our expectations there, Jagged. That was clean and crisp. That Maverick hole was actually it was pretty galaxy brain. I might steal that one for my ranked sessions, but holy moly, just taking picks early we said that and we talked about it how they weren't able to take advantage of those man advantages that they had earlier in rounds i don't know if we uh, jinxed it or if they heard us and they decided that they wanted to prove us wrong or what but very clean very concise flawless round and that gives you a little bit of confidence doesn't here now you're 2-2 two -two, you've got two more rounds and then you're going into defense this is looking pretty good for a and right here they're looking to change the tides Yep, and we see the Monty coming back out on Praise to try to leverage some more control of the map. Force NCSU back. Oh, they don't have the Tango with that French shield. They're going to try to make sure they can get the map control without a whole lot of effort. But we do see Taco. He sticks off that Mozzie onto the Warden to try to counter out the Capital. But unfortunate for him, that Capital is no longer on the board since we did see Praise six pick into the Frenchman. So while that shield, or he's actually not running a shield, he's running a Nitro Cell. So that 1.5x scope on that MPX is going to do wonders for Taco in the fragging department. i uh, put it about on the same level of fragging power as that Roni or the Commando, to be honest. Both of Mozzie's guns are very good, but this MPX is also a very slept on gun as well. So at the end of the day, not too big of a deal for NCSU that they six onto the Warden, but maybe a little bit, uh, you know, there's definitely less in that, you know, anti-intel uh, role. And it's all going to be left up to the mute of Drew to try to do that. Absolutely. Taco, too, maybe saw that Ying last time we were here and said, you know what, I'm going to counter that. But Warren is dressed pretty nice, though, so that's additional bonuses. We might see a sneaky pick here from him, actually, using that 1.5 to good effect. Early pick. Already down five to three. So Taco's going to find an early shot, and so will Predator. Wow. That is... We go from a one flawless round here from AM to being down two men early. And just like that, they have blue control a little bit, but it almost looks a little bit cursed for them. Not much else for them. And the uh, NC State now is a pretty good DID of where their bulk of their forces are. Yeah, so what we saw last time we were here is that you know, NCSU was going for this extended hold up above. AM took that last time and ran it down Freezer to try to get a quick execute. They wanted to get a quick execute again this round, but they tried to run it through blue. And with that meeting hatch open and those walls soft like they are here on E-Box, that's not going to be something that you can actively do. Taco, wishing he could control that recoil and land those shots a little bit better with that MPX. He's going to take a little bit of a damage, but finally lands the shot on the Dow. It's Anarchy. It's going to pick up a second on to Chief, and now it's all up to Jinro in the 1v5. He has a lot of work to do with half the round to do it. Is he aware that there's one in meeting? He's not, but I don't think Taco was aware that there might have been one in Green Hall either. And Jinro, he's going to take about half of his HP as Taco. He's going to go on the hunt. No, maybe not. He wants to, but he's getting a little bit aggressive. And I think Jinro is just kind of just saying, GG, go next. He's just going to go up into the top of small and talk with his team about that round, to try to figure out what to do for round number six. He's going to pull a laxing special Get that attack time out and just kind of you know, figure out what to do next time. Might be definitely a choice that'll be very, very helpful for them potentially. You know, taking the time to just say what went wrong, even mid round. You know, people preach that the best way to learn is to, oh, well, flawless round there, but people preach that the best way to learn is to look at your own mistakes, getting a little bit of time to talk to his team about it, and they can adapt. They're very much still in this game. You go going from one flawless round to another, definitely a little bit jarring. NC State is still here, and they're still an amazing team, and they just stole that round. You can't be too cautious with them. You can't give them an inch, or they'll take a mile. 3-2 here, but like you said, ideally, if you could go into your defense 3-3, three, three, that's going to be huge. So this round might be pretty big for a and and looks like we will see the Ying once again. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, once again, this is going to be a very pivotal round here coming out for AM. But the Ying's actually not going to come out. It's going to be sixth away. Perhaps, maybe not. I guess what they'll see. Two, one, zero. And it will not. Actually, will. Gridlock. Mm. One operator that you don't see a whole lot. It's going to try to lock down some of these flanks for N from, uh, from NCSU in the favor of AM. Try to just lock down some of it up top. Because we saw last time we were inside a meeting. We had so much flanking going on from the side of NCSU. 
you know, the, the bomb went down top main, <coughs> thanks to some work coming out from Taco and Anarchy, it allowed them to just, you know, completely overtake the work that a had already done earlier on in the round. Because remember, if you remember last time they played here on meeting, they cleared the top floor in the first minute, but then in a, a retake of the top floor happened quite instantly after that, you know, original clear, and it wasted so much more time that a just wasn't ready to waste and it allowed NCSU to you know, completely dominate that bomb site as it forced a and into a position that they weren't ready to be in, ultimately costing them, I believe it was you know, maybe a, a 3v0 at the end of the game. Uh, we hit the 0-0 in that last round. Just wasn't a great round for a and on the flanks. So they're going to bring out the gridlock to try to remedy that, try to make sure it doesn't happen again. Because like we said, they're at 2-3 right now. So not a terrible half so far, but if they can make this 3-3 work, they're going to be looking exceptional Attack going into the defense. Oh, absolutely. And an early pick there by Dow. Good work with that stuff. That's what you want with your entry fragger, isn't it? Getting that early pick, making the players upstairs life a little bit more miserable. But like you said, taking that gridlock might be a little bit of a calm down mechanism here too here. Uh, Jagged, you know, gridlock really does lock down she's pretty she can be used pretty confidently and pretty reasonably when you're talking about flank watch and you know if you just don't have to worry about one less direction if you can just not worry about one direction as much just slow down the game it might really work out for you and just let them settle down and just work and play siege because at the end of the day that's what they're good at that's why they're here just got to stay calm and they have the numbers advantage they've been struggling a little bit at, at first with with uh oh no they've been struggling at first but it doesn't look like they'll be struggling anymore 3v4 i might have jinxed them oh no yeah make this 3v3 now and all of a sudden you know a and is eating the bomb site and jinro is going for the plant the second smoke goes out is it going to force it off no he's going to stick the plant and he's going to get it down that smoke i guess completely missing and now ncsu has to do a retake on low hp they're definitely not in the advantage this pod he's going to get one before being c4 by pred but with 25 HP and a dream, it's not looking good for NCSU. Jack's taking a lot of damage from those gridlock track stingers. And AM has this hold, this excellent crossfire here from Sandbags to the stairs. Chief and Jinro, they're going to close it out in round number six. And that's a 3 3 half. So a quick execution leading to some very nice map control, allowing them to hold the perfect post plant. That was clean. That's a crossfire that you dream of, isn't it, Jag? It just, ha there was nothing they could do. If they had to retake, they would have to go through one gun one way and 180 the other, and that's not particularly easy. Good work by them going in 3-3 into their defense now. This is exactly the situation that we talked about. It, it's not the perfect. Everyone wants to be up 6-0 going into defense, obviously. But 3-3, a good start for them, able to take the last round two. Now they can relax and go into this round the stakes may be piling up a little bit here, though. They can't afford to lose a game. Every round becoming more and more heavy. Yeah, and you know, they got that 3-3 half. They're going to their defense. They're looking pretty solid. They've played a lot better here on Oregon than they did on Villa at any point in that game. They look a lot more put together and a lot. It's like they've, play, they've practiced this map a lot more. They're ready for these strats. We're going to be seeing one of those E-Box walls left soft. I do imagine there may be a shield placed in Pillar, perhaps, or they're just going to try to play Pillar without one. But regardless, it's going to be trying to hold some pressure onto that you know, that blue barrel's room, trying to make sure they can't just rush in from Khan. Otherwise, you know, I think maybe a little bit of roam coming out there from Pod and Dow. I think those two are going to, those are going to be your roamers. The rest of your players of Pinro, Chief, and Praise are going to be anchoring. With that smoke, Kade, and Echo, I wouldn't really expect anything else. You know, typically, I've seen Echo players with the recent changes use their drones as more, uh, more aggressive for their roamers, but not necessarily the operator themselves going for more of an aggressive style. It's not going to matter, though, because I think NCSU is going to be trying to go for one of these top-down clears. It looks like it's what they're getting ready for already. Clearing from tower over, and Pred, he might go for a pick into blue, but it looks like... Is that open? No, I, I don't think it is. I think that hatch is solid. It's been reinforced. And it actually has. It, so it's been reinforced. So there's no meeting hold coming out here, but Dow's sitting in green hall. He, he's going to be the first point of contact here uh, for NCSU. And if he does, and if he isn't taken out you know, rather soon, he could prove a thorn in the side of NCSU late in the rounds. 
he's gonna do he's already setting up pretty good here isn't he jagged to stall a lot of time we're seeing this he's in a spot he's not vulnerable as much he sees the drone he sees Diana coming up he's falling back smart he's not exposed very much and he's doing a great job stalling time already down to two minutes and just Ooh. like that there's a pick from pod and another pick from jira oh no this is turning bad really quick too Taking a look at these defender guns is one thing. quick thing I want to note. You've got some power on the defensive side. You know, that Kaid Aug really hits hard, and it's a great gun. On top of him being a three armor, you have the MP5 SD. You have a regular MP5. SMG11 is a god weapon in the hands of God himself. And just like that, there's another pick. Wow, A&M have come to life in this second game here, Jagged. Yeah, they want to bring it to that coastline. And we're seeing all players on the board here for AM get active. Praise the player that I was criticizing last map. He's doing a lot more and make it a flawless round as he's going to pick off a second with that shoddy onto NC Jack. So a great opening defense round here for AM. They're going to start off this second half extremely strong. They want map number three. Wow. Correct me if I'm wrong, was that a flawless round followed by a flawless round for the other team followed by a flawless round for the other team? Is that what uh, we just witnessed? I don't believe round number six or round number five were flawless. Round number four was and round number seven was, but I don't think five and six were flawless. Oh, well, regardless, we've been seeing a lot of flawless rounds and a lot of back and forth, and that's for great siege. It's almost like for everything NC State is trying to pull out of the bag, a and has found a way to deal with it. And maybe, just like you said, that little pseudo-tactical timeout that we saw in that round. Maybe there's an inspirational speech or something, because a and now has the point lead, the score lead, for the first time that we've seen. And it doesn't look like they're going to relinquish it anytime soon. Yeah, and a excellent play there between the roam and the coordination on that on that mid-floor uh, roam coming out there from a and on the bottom floor, on the bottom basement bomb site. But they're going to be rotating it up to kids now. We're going to have to see how that roam and how that coordination handles itself up here. There's a lot more vertical play here and a lot more uh, map control that you have to hold down if you're the defense of AM. NCSU, once they start getting things under their control, they can easily start pushing away some of that map pressure and easily start getting a bomb site under their grasp. This bomb site is very big, a lot of area to plant, and not as big. Actually, I'm, I think I would argue that there is more spot to plant in inside that top floor bomb site than there is on that basement because the entirety of that top floor outside of trophy master and top main is part of that bomb site. You can plant anywhere in it and you know basement you can only plant inside of the actual rooms themselves. Um, I don't know. I could be, could be wrong there. It could be just over overthinking it a little bit. But NCSU, they're going to have a lot of space to plant and a lot of space to work with. Is they're going to start here inside of T3. I'm seeing something interesting here, Jag, that I want to get your opinion on real quick. I see no hard breach on defense. What do you think about that choice? Or, sorry, denial. Um, You know, we saw that in the last game, too. It didn't really affect the game a whole lot there, uh, but it is a little bit interesting to note, especially because Cade is on the board, if I do recall. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Thatcher, I believe, is banned. But you have a, you know, you have a Maverick uh, and an Ash. So maybe it's just one of those was like, well, they're going to get the walls open anyways. Why not focus on the rest of the bomb site itself and try to hold down the angles after the breach is open? It could prove well for uh, for a and At the same time, it's also allowing NCSU to start opening these walls and get a lot of control and a lot of pressure established really early in the rounds. Interesting choice indeed. Let's see if it comes to bite them as Chief is going to actually have a pretty very important job here as we're going to see this attic take coming in and... Oh, this is going to be tough for him, I'm not going to lie. He does have that Jaeger Carbine and a shield to his help, but an explosion like that is going to remove his shield. Oh. And there goes the other. Wow, those, that is some quality nades. Let's hopefully he can get the reinforcement up in time. Oh boy, that was a quick dealt with. And now with a mid in 15, they don't... They're kind of forced all in the side. I'm seeing a lot of AM players here shoved into the one side of sight almost on the defensive, which makes sense, but they're really pushed back. Yeah, and those, I just want to point out, those names were extremely well placed. One from Taco mm -hmm. and one from Anarchy. They both hit their mark. And that second one almost killed Dow. He should have been dead there. If he had waited a second longer to move, he may not he, he may not be alive right now. Maybe a man advantage for NCSU. But Dow, he managed to make it out with about 30 HP. 
But Taco, he's going to open it up onto that Maestro that was sitting inside of the Breach. C4 goes out, and it's going to land on the oh. Pred. What a toss there going through the floor. Pod, he's going to keep it steady in a 4v4. Only 30 seconds left, though. And CSU has some map control that they need, but Pod is still on that flank, and I believe Chief is as well. And there he is. Chief on that flank is going to pick off Taco, I believe, through that meeting hatch. Now, man advantage for a and M, they have to plant this bomb with the there last 15 go. seconds. Nay's gonna go wide and not catch anything. Here comes the plant though. Nine seconds left on the clock. Praise is just sitting in the smoke. Smokes himself. Dow gets anarchy though, but the bomb is gonna go down successfully as it's all left up to Drew in the 1v3. Only the pistol left full of ammo. Praise is gonna clutch it up. And the, and the you know, the defuse is gonna come out. And that's another round for AM. They're looking so much better here on Oregon. A lot more loose too. You can see a little bit of smoke doing a little bit of fun, you know, a little crouch tossing, a little wiggling. AM finally, maybe they've settled down a little bit. Hey, this is our map. We're taking rounds just like that. We're going to take another. We can beat these guys. <sighs> oh man, this is this is looking like a different team here, Jag. And I'm not going to lie to you. AM on that villa looked a little bit more kerfuffled than we saw here today. They're looking clean, concise was able to get the plant off if you're nc state it's not the worst round in the world you were able to get a few picks you were able to get the diffuser down but quickly crumpled from there and just like this a and m is trying to bring this to match point isn't this a narrative yeah i mean it's, they're playing extremely well here in map number two and it's something i i was expecting ncsu to kind of run away with it after map number one but a and m is putting up a real fight here and especially since they're on that preferred half of oregon they're only two rounds away from setting us to coastline. NCSU, they need to start working their, you know, their, their magic here if they if they want to avoid coastline. Because coastline, it could be a coin flip depending on who wins it. I think at this point, no matter who wins map number two, or well, if AM wins map number two, that is, I think NCSU will still get the the side choice because they all mm -hmm. already won more rounds here on Oregon than AM won on Villa. So they'll get their side choice on coastline at least, but I, I feel like that's not a place that you want to be if you're NCSU since it's a map that you ban so often. But Tamu still has to bring us to map number three first. They haven't won the map yet. They're pretty close, but they still have to get at least two more rounds. It's never over till it's over, isn't it? And we've seen some crazy comebacks and everything, you, whether it be sports, esports, or bocce in your backyard at your grandma's house. The insane comebacks can happen and well, Taco wondering if Aruni is allowed. I believe she is, but it's going to be... I'm liking what I'm seeing here in terms of defender choice here, Jag. I just want to say that Morlusi is going to make their life awful. Smoke for additional denial if it gets late in the round. Aruni, just an absolutely awful thing to deal with. Just free burn for basically nothing, Jag. And on top of the Jagger, they're trying to make the, they're trying to turn this into just as much of a peak me because you have nothing left kind of showdown as they can and this site tertiary site not too common but it looks like they might have a pretty good strat here set up as i'm seeing a lot of players upstairs yeah it's something to point out with the aruni i believe she has been allowed in for these premier playoffs i do believe that is correct and spectator is confirming that right now so aruni and tachanka were voted in to be allowed for the premier playoffs here so it's gonna be something that we can start seeing obviously chalet was not voted in we are still sticking with theme for the remainder of the season through the playoffs but a rooney here on the defense is going to make ncsu's life a lot more difficult since it is like you said that free burn is on top of the ads's there's not a whole lot of bulletproof gadgets you only have the Lucy banshees in that shield on smoke so you know but you're going to use some form of utility to try to get rid of Dow's gates. We already saw one got burned, I believe, on that split doorway. Here comes the second one we see on the green hall. But the wall has already started to be mapped. But I don't know, is 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 NCSU going for this top control here? I'm, I'm not sure what they're doing. I'm not really sure what they're doing either. But whatever they're trying to do, they have to do it fast, Jag. It don't, this is not the same team that we saw earlier. We saw... In, we saw... We saw NC State just kind of running into sight earlier, using their advantage, and Pod's going to pick up an early pick. It, it, they almost look kerfuffled here, Jag Jagged. They're not the same hard-hitting, fast team. I think AM might be getting a little bit of a better of them here with their run, and you have to try and stay calm as best you can. It's They have the man advantage now as AM and they NC State down a man, but they're running out of time, and there will be an equalizer from NC Jack, and the user will go down, like, oh, just like no. that. Oh, boy. 
You have oh. to you have to kill the flanker there, and all of a sudden you know, it's 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 Anum lighting up the scoreboard, leaves it all up to Drew. Ooh. It's not gonna matter. No top control was taken, no roamers were cleared out, and it allows AM to just sit and wait, and all of a sudden the kills just come to them, and they're on match point here. Who would have thought about this? If you would have told me that this would have happened, I would have, I probably would have believed you because I believe in the comeback, but it would have been not uh, the most believable thing. But that was, it almost, it didn't even look like we were watching the same team there, Jagged. NC State has been great on the drones, great on the roam clear, great on the decisive, it was great at using their time effectively in there. They just kind of all ran in main floor and just looked lost. Yeah, I mean, NCSU, I, I think, you know, part of it is they're a little bit confused by how AM is playing inside of Oregon. Uh, I think they're playing, and playing a little bit differently than uh, what a typical team would be playing inside of this map. But uh, they're also, I think they were also, so they're, they're, they're definitely, I think, you know, Defender confused by the Aruni pick. Uh, I guess they weren't told that Aruni and Tachanka had been allowed in for these playoffs. Um, and I, now that they know that Aruni's allowed in for the playoffs, I have to imagine we'll be seeing some Aruni being run on on coastline. Uh, I think it, I think it is a pretty good, uh, pretty good, pretty solid map for Aruni. I don't really think there's a bad map for Aruni, just like there isn't really a bad map for Malusi either. Uh, Malusi's you know useful on literally every bomb site on every map. It's just a pretty pretty much an all around good pick operator. We've seen operators like that in the past, like back when Mozzie, when he first came out. He was pretty much a must must pick every single place you went due to his uh you know his potency when comboed with mute and vigil we saw you know with ssg we created their ssg patented roam inside a clubhouse and uh, you know it's just one of those with the with the uh suffi you know, self-sufficiency of certain operators it allows them to just be extremely useful and malusi's kind of filled in that role right now she's just so useful in every single situ situation you know you're you're kind of thrown if you're not running here to be honest Thing about a Bruni that I think is really great is she kind of has it all, you know. Your ops, she has good, she has pretty reasonable guns. I would say I personally think the Roni is great, but even if not, and if she has the DMR, if you're into that sort of thing, I guess. But on top of that, you have burn. On top of that, it's intel. Those gates, people don't give them credit for how loud they really are. It's free intel whenever one of those things gets burned. Yeah, she is pretty great. Maybe we will see her on coastline. Maybe a little bit of a revenge Aruni. Hopefully NC State doesn't have one of those Aruni mains that could seemingly do it all. But they still have to worry about this game. It is still possible for them to do it, and we're seeing a lot more concisiveness here, Jagged. They're in sight a lot sooner. They're pressuring. They're getting ready a lot sooner. But at the end of the day, you have a three run you have a three round run to make, and no matter what team you are, that could be tough. And these players upstairs, still no roam clear quite yet. It's not looking great right now, but well, that makes it look a little bit better. You know, it's definitely not impossible. We are seeing that that mid floor roam coming out here for AM, just like we saw coming out from NCSU. But they're playing it a lot better on their attack side than AM did on theirs, due to the fact that they're clearing this top floor. Obviously, it was a 50 50 win rate for AM on their basement attack so far. You know, uh, it's actually a 0% win rate for NCSU. They're looking to make it a 50% as well and bring us to map or round number, uh, was it round number 11, I guess? Um, you know, but they're going to have to get through this roam here first. Dow is still sitting inside a meeting. Uh, it looks, I guess he's the only one left on this roam. So it's just one more player, but there's a lot of map control that NCSU still doesn't have. And with the time dwindling and dwindling, they're running out. Uh, I mean, they're running out of time to be frank. They, they, they're running out of a lot of resources, that, but it's not really going to matter though. Taco's going to finally pick off Dow. So your last roamer is gone. But with 40 seconds left, you're going to have to work and execute pretty quick. It's uh, one thing my team captain always said. He says, sometimes you got to turn off your brain and uh, use your click butt, uh, your click finger. And just like that, it looks like they're going to have to. They have to rush into sight. They have to do something. And all the smokes have been Jack saved on top of that. 3v3. This is not looking good for NC State. going to flash in. But this is kind of a last-ditch effort. Smoke still has left and there's another one. Oh no kind of have to kill the smoke here if you really want an effective chance they're all gonna crowd in that box the smokes are just gonna make his life awful gets the pick on the smoke gonna eat the damage there's a c4 getting nothing the flank oh boy will this do it that's gonna do it that's map number two done 
AM's gonna win it 7 3. So we're gonna see Coastline. After all, I was expecting, you know, a 2 0 win for NCSG, but that's not gonna be the case. We're gonna be seeing Coastline, a third map between these teams. And honestly, AM's surprising a lot of people here tonight. They've played, you know, they haven't really been hitting up to where they need to against some of their tougher opponents. But they came to play tonight. They came to play here on Oregon. And that's good enough to bring us to coast. And that's good enough to, to, to give us a full series that we were expecting. Well, it looks like we get to see another good game of Siege. I, I'm kind of in shock that those two teams didn't even look remotely similar. We saw almost the confidence of NC State just kind of whittle away as AM just kind of ran away with it on their defense. We saw some indecisiveness. And even when NC State did everything right, the time wasting the roamers on a &M, we have to give them some credit such good stalling it was i think it was like 50 seconds there jagged before they were really able to hit that site wasting so much time and when you're short on time and there's smokes going off and you can't really check everything that's when you die yeah, I mean, they, and a and was doing that the entire defensive half there. You saw every single round on the defense, the time was dwindling to those last 30, those last 40, and those last 50 seconds, and it made it to where NCSU really didn't have the time or the manpower to try to work it and execute. The The Rome game coming out from Texas A&M was on point there, uh, and it really was you know spectacular to see. They had that comeback there on Oregon after losing Villa quite decisively. Uh, I mean, the... Hopefully they can continue it into map number three to make this a solid series. Uh, I mean, it'll be a, it'll definitely be interesting because neither of these teams have uh, have great records with Coast. Well, Coastline is, you know, sometimes it devolves into a gun off. And if we're talking purely gun offs on any average day, I feel like NC State might have a bit of the edge here. But like you said, they ban this map all the time. So will that factor in? Well, maybe they don't like this map and maybe a and particularly doesn't dislike this map. Regardless, I feel like we're going to have one heck of a game three on us. It could either be a barn burner or it could be a stomp, but I couldn't tell you which way it's going to go or even who's going to come out on top here, Jagged. Yeah, I mean, we won't know until we get into that map, but that's not going to happen until after this break. So we'll see y'all in a few for map number three on Coastline. care now you don't care 
counting stars Get it together You might can't sleep when you let it serve I know you wanna see me fall From a goal to my life, I can see you at the call Think about it, ring will tell you what I saw When you break it up, you'll see who had it all Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Collegiate R6. We're in map number three of our first play-in match for the Premier Playoffs. We have NCSU and A&M running the gauntlet. It was a 7-2 win on Villa for NCSU, followed up by a 7-3 win for A&M on Oregon. So we're going to be left here on the frag map of Coast to figure out who's going to be facing off in the round of eight. Will it be... The North Carolina boys with the T3 talent of Anarchy, or will it be the Texas boys of those underdogs of AM? Should be a pretty interesting game to say the least. I'm joined once again by Connor. How are you feeling going into Coastline? I'm feeling I'm feeling that little bit of a caster's buzz that happens when you're watching a great game. I'm really excited. And one thing that's right away, Thatcher, not really a common ban on Coastline. So we got to see a little bit of a different pick, Cappy Tau band. <sighs> now, before we go in here, I was talking to you this a bit on break, but I want to pick your brain. Is it true that NC State never plays Coastline? Yeah, so in recent history, NCSU has played Coastline zero times between CR6 and CEA. It's one of their perma bands inside of CR6, banning it four out of the five weeks that I have stats in and banning it once inside of CEA groups. They have yet to play it in either situation, not playing it in any of the playoff games of CEA or the group stage of CR6. It's going to be very interesting, though. a and they've played it once. They lost to Akron 2-7. Uh, so, I mean, really, these teams are technically on an even playing ground, but a and has shown some stuff on this map. Meanwhile, North Carolina State has not. So it's going to be a very interesting map, considering the fact that NCSU is a complete unknown when we come to this. Attackers need to locate and defuse. Yeah, it's absolutely true. And looking around, looking around at these at these operator choices, it's still so weird to me. 
every time I see just like a frag heavy stack on coastline because it's like, oh, well, there's a little bit less utility, but no, nope, we're seeing just gunners galore and I absolutely love it. Doc, come on, man. Doc on a map and in any real pro or amateur setting in a serious match i love it i love those off champ picks i'm still holding hope that someone plays knock in this game probably not gonna happen but looking around i'm liking what i'm seeing from both sides this map like you said a heavy gun show maybe that t3 talent comes in a little bit here and gives them a help i'm sure it won't hinder them but as the round starts here dow looking for an early pick and ladies and gentlemen this is it the winner of this game goes on, the loser goes home. Yeah. There's no and, second chances. Oh, man. Speaking of no second chances, Anarchy, oh. he's almost going to get taken out there by Praise. Getting very aggressive early on. AM, they noticed the aggression in map number two, was what was setting them up for success. So they're going to continue it here in map number three. And they're going to put the T3 talent that we talked about, that buck player of Anarchy onto 20 HP, and that can be really critical throughout the rest of this round because Anarchy is most likely going to be underneath the bomb site, trying to open up those floorboards and create space for this attack of NCSU to move in. And with that low of HP, he's going to die to a single bullet by any gun in the game. That's not what you want when you have that soft destruction that you need to get done. No, he's definitely going to be looking over his shoulder and... That's definitely not what you want. Anarchy really does have a tough task here. I think that being underneath and in any situation where you can't be watching anything, like he's got to be aiming up through the floors and looking through holes in the floor. He's really vulnerable and having, I don't want to say having that health is a little bit of a layback. Okay, I can afford to maybe get a cool flick off or eat one bullet and duck, but now he doesn't have that. And a minute and 30 seconds in, the NC State attack hasn't really amounted to much. Yeah, you know, we're halfway through the round, and now NCSU is finally starting to get inside of the map to try to get underneath. The ping, ping comes out onto the Mozzie, and Prince going to pick off Pod. So, opening pick in favor of NCSU, but there's still at least one more player down on the road. We see Jinro pushing in through Kitchen, trying to get this flank off. He's going to make his way into service, but I don't think there's any drones that have seen him on this flank. He's going to be completely unnoticed, as none of NCSU, NCSU seems to care about him at all. And now he's made his way to lobby. But there's no one here. Everyone's rotated around to that office side to allow Anarchy to start opening up those floorboards. Right, he's made his way into Blue Bar. And they've kind of just switched places here. Shots come out from Pred. That's the Chief off the board. So we're looking at a solid man advantage here for NCSU. But only 45 seconds left to go. Well, uh, Predator has decided that, you know what? I'm playing Sophia. I'm a fragger. I'm just going to go in and I'm going to make some plays. And honestly, that was a pretty nasty pick as... This could make the round here. Juro's flank. They don't even know he's there. This could make the round. This could make it or break it. There goes the buck. Will he get the Zof too? No, he's going to be taken down. Triple kill by Predator. Oh boy, 4v2, 20 seconds left. It's all on praise here. Has a little bit of time, but oh boy, he's getting pushed. Oh, this is awful. Oh, this is like sharks smelling blood. Oh, no way. Oh, but okay. Yeah, so good plays coming out there from NCSU on this first round. Pred going huge with the three-piece from underneath. He's going to take out all three roamers off the site. NCSU, they managed to make it into the bomb site to try to plant the bomb there. And great coverage on the planter, allowing them to salvage. Not really salvage, allowing them to just save the round from what could have been a loss if that time, if that swing had been timed better from that Jaeger there uh, of I guess it was, was it Dow on that Jaeger that we saw? Yeah, it was Dow on that Jaeger, I believe. Um, you know, if that time, if that swing had been a better time, it possibly could have uh, won the round there for AM if there had been no refrag. But because there was one and because the, the swing was not properly timed, while you did get the planner, you did not get the round. And NCSU, they're looking solid here to start coastline. Very solid. Maybe a little bit of constructive criticism. Might want to try and speed it up a little bit and give himself a bit more time, but you're right. At the end of the day, great refrag potential. That has been the story for them, I would argue. That's been one of their best points. Every time they've died, it's seemingly another player there to at least try and get the refrag. It has failed them a few times, just sometimes you come into a hot gun, but most of the time, the refrag ability has been very good, and when you have the number advantage, good refragging just numerically wins you rounds. Thanks to Miss Harris, grade three basic math, she taught me that simple strategy. When you have more, more numbers, you're more likely to win if you're subtracting by one each time. But 
I did like the aggressiveness here for an A&M Jagged. I liked what I saw. They were applying pressure early and almost took NC NC State or off balance a little bit. Yeah, I mean, NCSU, they played really solid round one, and they I think they took A&M by surprise a little bit there on that run clear below. I don't really, I, I think A&M might have been a little bit too aggressive there, maybe. I think they were definitely feeling themselves after that map two of Oregon, and they were trying to go for some more of this aggression that was working so well for them inside that linear map. But coastline here, it's a bit of a fragger's paradise. So while the aggression can pay off in dividends, it could also lead to a huge detriment if you're not careful and if you do too much of it. But we are going to be seeing three roamers below once again. Dow, and it was Dow in general here on Cool Vibes, and you still have Pod below over inside of office. He's made his way back into Blue Bar, though, as they have realized that some of the push is coming from Kitchen and uh, and outside of Sunrise Bar. Taco, he's pushed all the way up through Kitchen, rather, now, and he's waiting for the pick to come in his favor. Anarchy on the Blue Bar window. He wants to be peak Pod, though. He's going to get out of dodge, make his way back to office, and now the rotation is coming from all the players off-site to lobby and service side you see lobby in dow and then you saw two of them sitting inside of that uh i mean that the cctv or window but taco that's a lobby player gone droned him out from kitchen and managed to pick off the dock so no more stim pistols coming out i don't think a single one of them had been used since obviously he was that was the first actual engagement anyone had been in so a lot of uh, a lot of health off the board there and now the utility is going to be coming out for NCSU as they pick off Chief as well. Looking good through this round so far. Oh, this is just getting worse and worse. The Fraggers here are really doing their job, making their presence known. Pod, not on site, kind of from our perspective, he's not really doing much. But from him, he's kind of holding it. But now, oh boy, General's all alone on site. This is, this is not a situation you want to be in 2v5. You don't really even have the luxury of time that much be tagged below there's a little bit less he's he's on death store but pulling a little magic here but i don't know how long he can last this might be unsalvageable but anna market's definitely going to try they are on defense which is in my from what i've seen seems to be what they prefer a little bit more but might go down 2-0 early but there's still a little bit of time left nc state needs to get on site and plant and just as i say it here they come and Pod missing the shots, unlucky there. He's been taken out to about half HP as General gets taken out. Bombs down, 1v5 post plant. It's not looking good. And Pod, he knows it's not gonna, he's not gonna happen. So instead of just wasting everyone's time, he's just gonna take him out, himself out with an impact, not give a single kill to any of the attackers. Doesn't want to pad their stats. So he's willing to take the hit on his own. You know, a bit of a, bit of a moral victory there for Pod. Uh, if you're thinking about it for AM. But NCSU with, with technically a flawless round there. I mean, not, not technically a flawless round, a flawless round there uh, on their second attack. That clear went a lot quicker than it did the first round. And uh, I mean, just the, the, the players on NCSU are playing so well here on Coastline so far. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think maybe AM might feel it too because they are going down to Kitchen now. Going to have to play up above and that bucket especially now that he's been buffed a little bit. I remember he got that ammo upgrade on his shotgun. Now he holds more rounds. It's going to cause havoc because we will see the man in the suit come back one more time. Love to see those not as much pick picks in game, but Kitchen can be very polarizing, Jagged. I've seen it be played incredibly well where the upstairs is held well and the attackers have no options, but I've also seen it fall apart very fast. I guess we'll just have to see what kind of kitchen defense we see here. Yeah, and it's kind of unfortunate because Chief was once again baited into picking the, the six, picking the Warden. We saw, I think Predator got random picked onto that glass and Chief in response brought out the Warden. I believe it was over the mute. So, I mean, you get a better gun and you get another shield, uh, but you don't really have any, like, you don't have any drone denial outside of the Mozzie and you don't have any wall denial. So, you can't mute away, you know, your doorways uh, or your upstairs in general to try to allow your roamers to flourish without being, like, spotted out. But you do gain a shield and a 1.5 scope on that MPX. But at the end of the day, I mean, it's not going to matter if you can't get any picks. Because right now, you know, NCSU's dominating the kill feed in all aspects of it. And it's, you know, a and they need to figure out how to stop the bleeding here. Because if they can't stop the bleeding here in round number three on Kitchen then it doesn't give me a whole lot of hope going through the rest of this map. 
Oh, absolutely, and oh, comp their confidence might wane a little bit too. The more and more you get down, obviously they want to go 4-2 into their defense, but 3-3 looking a little bit more realistic, and it all starts with this round is Anarchy going to use that gun to push in. I feel like this gun is absolutely insane. That buck assault rifle is crazy, and just like that, Predator going to get another pick. He's been hungry today, Jagged. 5-0-0. No assists. Wow, a little bit selfish, but it's working out for him. He's got five kills all by himself. I mean, honestly, Down a man early. Yeah, I mean, I mean, honestly, like NCSU, they're they're just finding AM out of place here on coastline. They're a and M's proving why they don't play coastline often and why the one time they did play it, they lost. NCSU's been hiding this away for some time now, so it doesn't really surprise me that they're playing extremely well here because of the fact. That they auto ban it for so long usually when a team does that it's because they're saving it for a special occasion they're saving it for when they need to run it out and they obviously show that they chose that they needed to do it here dow though he's going to show that he shouldn't have gone for that swing he tried to peek up through those holes made by the bucket anarchy he's going to do a little bit under half of that buck's health but he's going to lose his own life in return not the greatest if you're uh, if you're keeping track of the kill feed <laughs> Are you, are you suggesting that there is a big brain conspiracy here where NC State's best map actually is Coastline, but they ban it so no one has info on it until they need it? I mean, it very, very well could be. We haven't seen it in so long. <laughs> that it very well could be that case. Well, uh, they're definitely making that case right now. On track for another flawless round. 5v2, 45 seconds left. Diffuse are going down. Not much praise can do. Pod as well is able to help. It's not impossible. Oh. Oh. The last oh second of denial. This round's doable now. It's a 2v2. And there's only 30 seconds left to go. <laughs> Drew's going to go for this plant once again. Great denial there, but Anarchy has the cross up top. And Pod's going to get taken out after the air. Oh. Jeff stops him. Almost salvaged round there from AM. But NCSU manages to take it in those last few seconds. It was almost extremely, that was an almost extremely great retake there from AM. I, I can I'm just trying to process what I just saw right there as we will see a pause for right now uh, probably an issue happening we'll let you know as soon as we know but I you're right I can't I couldn't believe my eyes it started with that great C4 denial have to give credit saving the C4 we saw earlier in game one jagged that those C4 usage may have been a little bit trigger happy we were seeing them go out very early or early in the rounds and not getting any HP but seemed to have calmed down a bit that C4 in his back pocket came in clutch get the kills from above get the flank but nomad gadget comes again comes through again and nc state there maybe has a little bit of a scare but now you're up 3-0 and it's not looking good for AM. just trying to take one round yeah i mean they proved that they have what it takes to be able to take a round in that last round unfortunately they didn't win it but that retake almost coming out almost salvaging what should have been a flawless round for ncsu it proves that AM is not out of it just yet. It's a closer game somewhat than the scoreline may see. Maybe that, you know, that flawless round from NCSU, maybe, maybe not the closest round. Uh, but AM, they have three more on their, their defense. Coastline is typically an attacker sided map. And with the bands of Valkyrie and Mira, it's going to lend that way a little bit further. No intel with those Valk cams and no pressure being established in some of those upstairs uh, parts of the map with those mirror windows that allows NCSU to be able to take control uh, with relative ease. And they're finding the roam out on AM really quickly. And so if AM can kind of work this roam into where it's not getting immediately shut down and they waste more time towards the end of the round, then it could very well be an AM round at the end of the day. We will see the Ying be baited a little bit. Now it'll go to the Habana. It'll be interesting to see if we get the bait for the Warden. No, it's not going to happen this time. I mean, it hasn't worked twice. Third time Defense. would have been the charm. Well, no, not really, but it wasn't baited into it. Going back to kitchen here, and you know, I think that was a good choice, Jagged, because those upstairs rounds, very one-sided, and to an extent, the kitchen one was too, but at the end there, a little bit of glimmer of hope, and if you're a and maybe any glimmer of hope, any spark to get that one round to get it started, you're trying to end 3-3, and... I don't, I don't think it has to be said that being down 4-2 or Lord forbid 5-1 or 6-0 is just not where a &M wants to be. So what do you think they have to do to really take this round and really get on the board? 
Well, the Rome game is going to have to be stronger. They're going to have to play, you know, maybe one or two, maybe three people upstairs, or at least two people upstairs and one in that blue bar side of the map, trying to deny at least some of the entry from NCSU for at least 30 seconds to one minute. You're going to want to try to deny the entrance into the map and try to deny the pressure being put on. But it looks like NCSU might be going for a rush. Taco's ready with an asterisk at the window, but no, he's going to fall off. So maybe a rush that was not meant to be. They decided against it. They said, all right, let's actually clear the map out. We know we're up 3-0, but I, you know, we'd rather finish this off quicker than, uh, than let it be uh, dragged out. So they're, they're gonna they're gonna fall off of that decision to try to go for a bit more of a clear we do have a, a player here sitting inside of sun and it's the malusi of pod he has no idea that he's been droned out right now off again he still has no clue but no he hears the drone pops it out and he knows he's been spotted so he's going to be very careful about his location but the top floor clear is coming in and ncsu after a minute they're starting to get a little bit of control Interesting choice by taco there he has the drone he knows that the Malusi is in there, but he decides that, you know what, I'm just going to go elsewhere. And that I think that just goes to show how intelligent he is. We saw him absolutely destroy in some of the earlier games. And being a good Ash main, I feel like, has a stigma that you can only click heads. But no, Taco literally showing why he's the Ash main. And he's smart. He says, you know what, I'm better off elsewhere. I'll keep the info and bank it. One minute, 33, one minute 30 seconds here, though, and not very little on-site pressure here, Jagged. This is this is kind of shaping up to not be great, but here we go. Anarchy going in. That T3 experience, well, might need to frag out a little bit as the site pressure is starting to mount up. Ooh. This, is the, this is the meat and potatoes of the game, and Anarchy's going to get us started off. Yeah, and the pinch is coming in beautifully for A or for NCSU as they take down two members of A&M. Obviously, we saw the Jaeger of Praise get a shot through the floor on the taco. So... Your Ash is no longer going to be available, but with two players off the board, that's your full roam game gone, and you're with 50 seconds left to go, you could be in a solid spot here, even though AM is holding it mostly from offsite. So you did lose your Ash, but you have that buck available, and you have your hard breach still, as well as, I mean, just in general, your fragging power is still on the board, but they're going to have to make this execute work very fast here. That buck shotgun has so much ammo. Holy moly, he is renovating the entire floor. Well, I mean, that I guess that's part of what makes him buck and what makes him special. There we go. That's going to be an early kick. Pseudo 3v3 now is well. no match going to be down. That is not what you want. Just like that 4v2, though, going to equalize it a little bit. Only 15 seconds. All right, pod. All right, praise. This is it. This is where you earn that spot on the team. This is the biggest moment of the round. Oh, but Praise is still inside a court. But now it's all up to the Praise. Three seconds left. Do they know he's here? They do. But the plant has to go down now. And with one second, Anarchy's chasing the kill. Is he going to get it? No. Oh, all of a sudden, Drew's on a quad. Praise is on a quad as well. Or Drew's not on a quad, but Drew's going to get the bomb down. It's all left up to him on 25 HP. Praise is going to look for this ace clutch. He has so much time to work with to find the kill. All it's going to take is one bullet to take out Drew. And Drew's stuck inside the bomb site, but. Praise isn't aware. He has no information on the player. Drew has to watch very carefully on these angles. Is he going to see him? Praise is going to make his way into kitchen. I don't think Drew's aware of that. And Ace is going to come out for Praise. Make it a clutch. Put it in the highlight reel. What a great play coming out here from this Jaeger in courtyard. He's going to make it well known that AM is in this game still. That's going in the YouTube montage. You know that's going to be on his YouTube channel tomorrow. We talked about stolen rounds, Jagged. And we talked about how they could swing games. And how one stolen round could really set the tone. And that's got to be the most stolen round I've ever seen. Absolute thievery. Hold, we might need to call the police because that was some grand larson right there. <laughs> and you know that AM and their call right now, they're popping off a little bit. That is one heck of a first point to get and now only two rounds to go three three that seems a lot more doable yeah i mean you know only two rounds left in their defense half but you know after that last round that's a huge momentum builder if you're a and m and they may have what it takes to figure out how to finally defend this hookah bomb site if they don't maybe they move on to a tertiary bomb site because i don't think you're going to want to lose hookah four times if that's the case <laughs> But maybe after that ace clutch coming out from Praise, they figured out how to properly, you know, adjust to
to figure out what NCSU is running on the table. You know, it is you know worth noting that Chief and Dow have yet to find the scoreboard inside of this game. We're five rounds in now, but I mean, they're going to have to find the scoreboard here if, uh, if A&M wants to win this hookah defense. Because last time, you know, it's left up to these site anchors and Chief and Dow are going to be your anchors here. If they can't hold down the site when the roamers aren't doing the best job in the world, then it could spell disaster for AM. and you know, even though they get one round on that kitchen defense, that's the only kitchen defense they're going to get for the rest of the half. Next time they get it, we'll be in overtime if we get that far. Yeah, this is definitely when they got to step up here, and obviously, when you're pitching a donut and you're getting deeper into the game, it kind of gets on your conscience a little bit, maybe hurts your confidence, and... In a game like Siege, I would argue confidence is super important as we're seeing max rat behavior from Prize with those bullet holes. I, I, I'm curious to see if he gets a pick from that, but they kind of just have to step up and do their job. And at the end of the day, this is a team game. They're, your teammates will be there to help you out, so don't think you have to go be a hero just because you're below. Just got to stay chill and they'll do it. But I'm still holding out hope that maybe we'll see a Chonka over Smoke, but I doubt it's going to happen. No, I, I think in general, in every situation, that your smoke is going to be better than a Tachanka. And the pick from Chief, he's finally going to find the scoreboard on a Taco. Taco is not having the best map here on Coastline. We, we hyped him up so much in map number one and two. But so far here on Coastline, he is just not having the same type of field day. But good for Chief. He's going to find the opening pick for a and It's their first opening pick of the map. And, you know, we saw what happens in Oregon when they get the opening pick. They can make those rounds work in their favor. But now the run clear is going to have to come out from NCSU. They're down one, but there's still half the round left to go. More than enough time to bring it back in their favor and figure out how to execute with this. Just no more explosives on the Ash, but you do still have some on Pred. So, not the end of the world, but as the clock ticks down, you're going to want to remedy it pretty fast. This might be, I don't I don't have like the definitive stats for this, but I feel like I've been seeing a trend here in these in these rounds where NC State has been a bit slower getting onto site. It hasn't been working well for them. They a few of their late time rushes have worked. They've gone a few rounds, but as a whole, A and M can really stall out these rounds good. And I'm looking at the clock right now, and I'm looking at that smoke here, Jag, and he's got all three charges left on those smoke grenades, and that is definitely what you want, as Chief's going to be able to get away with this sneaky little hatch drop. This is this is not looking particularly good, especially if they try to go for that default plant. They're just going to get smoked out of oblivion. And yeah, not to mention there's two, three C4s on the side of NCS, or on the side of A&M, and Praise, oh. he's going to keep the tide going. He's going to get a run out on the Predator, so make it a 5v3, why don't you? We could be gearing up for a flawless round here from AM. Because with 30 seconds left to go, well, no flawless round, but with 30 less than 30 seconds left to go, you know, the <laughs> NCSU has zero map control. And now it's all left up to Anarchy Drew and NC Jack in the last few seconds. But Anarchy's gonna blind himself as the smokes oh. come out, and Drew's gonna go down. And all of a sudden, five seconds left. It's all up to NC Jack. C4 goes out in a 1v4. It's not gonna matter. Dow is gonna clean it up with two and AM. They're now at 3-2, and a 3-3 half looks entirely doable now. Oh boy, and if, if they can actually achieve that, I think that that would be... I think that would be more than just being 3-3. Obviously, being 3-3 is neutral, but a and if they get this, they will have won three rounds in a row without really, without really NC State being able to get any words in. They've been pretty dominant there, and we saw it with the early picks. Those early picks have really given a and some extra energy to do with it. Oh... Please praise, praise, please stick it, please. I want to see it so bad, Jade. You, oh, oh, they're gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, so the chunk is gonna be coming out. No smoke. There's, actually, yeah, there's a smoke. So we're gonna be doubling up on that, and we're gonna be seeing a blue bar defense to round out the first half, and the Aruni and the Maestro and the Malusi to round out the defensive lineup. So the Tachanka is going to be very interesting because his job is going to be to deny some of the entry late in the game with those Shumika grenades to try to deny, you know, through that mud room and in through, like, you know, behind that blue bar plant spot. It's going to be to try to deny some of the entry and some of the positioning there from the attack of NCSU. And in the di dying seconds of the round, he, you know, it may very well do a great job at that depending on how much map control NCSU is able to take early in the round. 
I can only shudder at the amount of area denial time they have with Smoke and Chonka on the same team. That's going to be painful. If they really wanted at around a minute and 15 seconds, they could just say, Nah, you know what? You're not coming from this direction anymore. I, I doubt it'll come to that, but... I wonder where Chonk is gonna place this turret hat as I'm joking. Old Chonka was objectively better and we all know it, but jokes aside, I, this site can be very polarizing. I think back to times where it's gone absolutely terrible, but the upstairs roamers and the people holding upstairs are going to have a lot of work cut out for them here, Jagged. They have a lot of places where they can be shot from, and they've got to pull a little bit of magic out here to really keep the momentum going. Yeah, I mean, NCSU is not in the worst position. A&M also not really in the worst position. We're, we're kind of in even grounds here so far. You're really expecting what you would you know, what you would want to see coming out here from coastline. A 3-3 half is pretty typical, even though a 4-2 half on the attack is, you know, maybe more natural to just based on how the map flows. But Taco, he's not going to waste any time. He's going to take down Pod inside of, I guess he was inside of, was he inside of VIP or was he inside of Hall of Fame? Might, might have been inside of Penthouse, to be honest. Not quite sure what it was. It looks like it looks like it was a wall bang into uh, into Master Penthouse based on that reaction from Todd. So opening pick gonna go in the favor of NCSU, looking good once again. And with time to spare, they have a lot of a lot to be able to work with. And yeah, it was a wall bang through that Penthouse wall from from VIP. And now you know they're trying to clear out this lobby pressure now, just in case. Because if you're going for a blue bar execute, you cannot have someone sitting in lobby. It, Creates such a clean line of sight to be able to deny the plant behind that bar. So as long as you can have an attacker sitting there to watch that cross, you should be able to get a, a, a plant down on that bar relatively easily. Yeah, that's definitely what they're going for. And Chanka, the legend, the hero himself, our lord and savior, he's got free armor and he's got a big gun and he's going to try and make some plays here. He's trying to be aggressive. His presence has been known. And even if that stalls just a little bit of time, that's what you want. We're getting down to a minute here. And even though it's 5v4, one minute, not a real lot of direct onside pressure. They have above, but now they're working in the office and they're approaching site. This, I can think of worse positions to be in if you're a and if you have to be down a man, this ain't particularly bad as Buck is going to continue re renovating upstairs. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, for 45 seconds left to go. Here's what we have to work with. We have three smokes and 10 shimmer grenades. So we have more than enough utility to try to deny a plant. And with less than 40 seconds, with a bubble still here, by the way, the plant's going to be attempted to go out. And here come the zappings in from that evil eye. Do they have any utility to deal with it? They actually have two ash charges, but Anarchy's been dropped to so low HP. I don't know if Taco's in the right place to be able to use it. And the smokes are coming out and force all three now out. It'll probably be about 10 seconds left for the plant to go down. But NC Jack is not ready, or Drew's not ready rather, to go for this plant. He's taking so much damage from those you know, from the smokes. And here come those Shumikas. And Taco, he's going to rush into the kitchen and he's going to find one. And all of a sudden, the kill board lights up blue. The plant's going to go down. It's all left at the Dow in a 1v4. All of his opponents are low Oof. HP, but it's not going to matter because Anarchy from above is going to finish it off. And NCSU is going to finish it off 4-2 split on this attack half. Wow, that really, they really turned a not-so-great situation into a, uh, yeah, we're just going to take this round situation. And 4-2 is the final. That's I would say, like you said, that's probably more natural, especially on Coastline where, <laughs> I'm going to be real, those tertiary maps, not of the the most pristine brand we're looking at like the costco brand of tertiary sites here so 4-2 a little bit more natural but that's okay if you're a and m you're going on to your attack now it's not going to be easy you're going to probably see some crazy stuff that you've never seen from this defense nc state up 4-2 it's probably closer to even i like what you said that the whole feeling of the game right now is pretty neutral maybe a bit in the way of nc state because they have the score lead but this is going to be big. This attack round could put them down five to two, or this can bring them even closer. And it might be, might be big to set their confidence in the tone. Yeah. So the, the way the meta has shifted inside of the last couple seasons, it's made it to where it's a lot, um, it's a lot, you know, not necessarily easier for the attack, but it's a lot. Uh, it's 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 one of those where it's not as deadly. It's not you're not as forced into one lineup. You're no longer having to utility burn for 95% of the round and then try to shoot people the last 5%, you have a lot more leeway when it comes to trying to open up your strategy a little bit. And uh, I mean, I think NCSU has uh, shown that in spades over the last you know, few maps. 
and now they've moved on to their defense. And like I talked about last map, once they realize that, you know, Rooney's available for play in this playoffs, first round of their defense on map number three, she's going to be brought. <laughs> Predator's going to be the one running her. Can't, wasn't, wasn't paying attention to see if, if he's running the, uh, the DMR or if he's running the Roni. I just want to wait. It is the DMR, actually. So DMR favored by the arena players here inside of this matchup. Typically, uh, I prefer the Roni just because of its high rate of fire, even though it has a smaller magazine. Uh, I like that automatic feeling of the Roni. It has no recoil. Uh, you know, sometimes that DMR just doesn't hit where I need it to. Yeah, but, eh, you know, say, say that for another day. Because right now, NC Jack almost gets his head taken off as I believe he's rotating into Aqua. But Pod, he's been taken down. Is he savable? That's the question. He's down below. So, theoretically, he is savable. And it looks like he is going to be picked up here by, by Praise on that Nomad. And so he's going to be able to keep doing some work, allowing an... A and M to stay in this without losing a man advantage. Gonna have to give a little bit of a golf clap to Anarchy here. I just realized double digit kills, six rounds in. Good work from him. He's been definitely showing a bit of that T3 experience like we were talking about earlier. You were able to get Ash back up. There's a little bit of damage around the board and talking just net collective damage. It's about the same. Ash though, dangerously weak. You never want to be that low. Even the SMG 11 will do it as Jinro and Dao are going to get two picks early. Oh boy, that is not what you want. Dao, what is possessing this man? He is just wh whipping it around two to four. I, I love how bad things just got there. And just like that, good refrag and suddenly out of nowhere, Taco left to do almost the impossible here, Jagged. Yeah, I mean, he got he got put into a well, 1v4 within, you know, 30 seconds. He's going to pick up one onto Praise, but now he's rotated into Aqua. I don't think Jinro is aware of his position here, but with the HP on a and this is completely winnable. I have seen Taco win these before. 1v3 with a minute left to go. He has plenty of time to work with. I mean, plenty of bullets to work with as well. I mean, you, everyone knows that 416 Carbine goes Burr. Not as Burr as the Alda, but there goes one Ooh. onto Jinro. Now all left up to Dao and Pod. Pod is one bullet HP. Dao was the, gonna be have the spearheading these engagements here. Does look like it's a pinch coming out though as you know, Taco's now dropped. So he's gonna have to run back up that cool vibe side. And I don't think they're aware of his position. Dao though, he's gonna take that 30 HP damage as he runs through that Syria gate. And all of a sudden they're, they're recognized that his push coming through Cool Vibes is here, and Taco lit up to about 30 HP. Plant was going to go down, but not anymore. Taco, 1 HP now. He has no choice what to do. The chase comes out from what? Pod. Pod, why would you chase that? He has the pings on the planter. Is he going to get it? No, he's not. Plant's going to go down. Dow, 75 HP. Has the red pings for Taco, though. Taco's going to swing. Is he going to find it? He's not. Dow with the oh. pistol is going to win it out. A&M almost losing that round off the back of some over-aggression. But luckily, they're able to clutch it out. That taco was a little bit too spicy for me. Can you take off some of that chipotle sauce? I, I don't know what he was thinking there. That would have been a pretty sick, I guess. But almost a little bit needlessly over-aggressive there by Taco. But hey, I guess the round worked out. 4-3. Are, are you feeling nervous too? I'm starting to get that little bit of the nerves here. Because we're going into 4-3, folks. And again, if you lose, you're gone. This is a qualifying playoffs this is this ain't, this ain't no small game this ain't no scrim this is high stakes and as we're getting higher in these round counts here every round counts a and m may be feeling i don't know maybe be a bit overconfident or a bit hyper but it worked out and now we're going to kitchen and uh this might really set the tone here i mean it just might you know ncsu and a and m they surely are running the gauntlet this has already been closer of a game than any of the maps before it we're already you know four three this then these this could very be a four four after this round and you know, already looking better for you know both teams than uh either of the maps they lost at the end of the day though winner of this is gonna move on like you said loser this is gonna be going home neither team wants to be going home and csu they want to keep racking up their scores. They want to keep going on their hot streak. They have what it takes to make it all the way to the finals. They're in the grand finals of a different league right now. AM, though, they're the underdogs in this match, and they want to prove that they have what it takes to hang with some of the big dogs. They have been in that position a long time ago, a number of years now. It's been since they've been in a position like that. You know, lately they haven't, the last couple of years, they haven't been in that best position possible for them. But they're showing that they may still have some of that fire left inside of this roster. And the uh, roster wants to shine. And this is the best stage they've ever had for it to go. 
I see those frost mats and I'm getting oh boy you know frost if if you could see it if you could find it if you drone the mats all she really is is a gun and a shield I guess she does have a shotgun help with sight prep gun a low fire rate does a decent amount of damage but if they can catch even one player from AM in that frost mat that's huge that's a basically a free pick Predator probably gonna put them in slimy spots. I saw it in the corner there downstairs. I can't tell you how many times I've just backed up into that corner while trying to look for an angle. Hopefully that doesn't happen, or maybe hopefully it does if you're an NC State fan, but it's two minutes in. We're still things are pretty calm, but it looks like we're on the eve of a play, and we've seen it, Jagged. The team that gets the first pick usually goes on to have a great round, and just like that, it looks like AM is making their case that this round just might be theirs. Yeah, I mean, so far through this, through this, through this map specifically in coastline, each team that's won the opening engagement has gone on to win the round. But a trade is going to come out from Predator on the pod, so it's back to a four v four. Not the worst case in the world. This could be the round that bucks that trend. We have seen it, you know, been, he has been bucked in previous rounds. But Chief, he's going to burn the, he's going to burn the gate. But he's not going to wait long enough, and he's still going to take thirty HP of damage anyway. So good, uh, you know. Taco from the grave, still still getting his assists in with his utility. Uh, unfortunate there for Chief, but he's just going to be a little bit less HP. And a C4 is going to go out, but not going to land. As, you know, we did see Chief rotate around to the other side of the bed. So unfortunate there that C4 doesn't catch anyone. But NCSU is wasting a lot of time here. There's only 55 seconds up to go. And a and still has a lot of work to do. This is quickly devolving into one of those situations where you say, all right, well, I guess we got to hit site now. And Predator doing his really good job. He needs to be cleared out here. This is just going to be awful for him. And they might just might get, he's going to shoot through and get taken down by Dow. That's a start. 35 seconds, man advantage. This is the position you want to be if you're A&M. And I'm looking at their util and they still have two Zope stun charges. That could really come in handy. And now it's a 2v4. Jack is not even on site. And Anarchy is pushed out as well. Oh boy. Oh boy, Jagged. Yeah, and the plant's gonna go down and it's all left up to Anarchy as Dow hits a quad and he's gonna go for the ace, but no, Phrase is gonna take it away from him. Make it a four piece for Dow and a single kill for Praise. I mean, it's, round, round taken wow. by A&M and all of a sudden we're back to an even score line. Not really what we were expecting to see here. And then CSU, they're gonna take their pause. So a much needed pause by both teams being taken out on this map, trying to figure out what's going wrong and how they're going to fight their way back in. We saw, you know, after AM used their pause, they started going up round after round. They started stringing things together. And now hopefully NCSU can do the same with theirs. We, we have these tactical pauses for a reason. It's allowing for these teams to regroup and figure out what's going wrong. And he's going to, but the question is, is it going to be enough? Are they going to be able to talk themselves through it? AM is, you know, on what could be considered the more uh, you know, the more proficient side, the, the better side for this map. You know, only three rounds away for each team here. This may go to overtime. I don't think I could handle overtime. I'm gonna be real. I'm sitting down in my chair. I have like this ball that I used to use to massage my muscles back in the day. And I'm this thing is like gonna be warped by the time I'm I'm squeezing this thing like crazy. I love good siege and I hope everyone at home does too. And this pause for NC State, it it's good to give them a little bit of chill, like, you know, a little bit of calming down to, can we figure something out? Can we talk through it? But I've also seen situations where it can be a bad move because if you're a and and you are having all this momentum and the other team calls for a pause, maybe they can view it as we've got them on the back foot and now they're trying to find an answer. So we need to keep doing what we're doing. There's two mentalities to taking timeouts like this and taking pauses. But you're right. I mean, I remember when we came into this map, we were not sure about what the outcome was going to be, but I'm going to be real, Jake, and I was not expecting a barn burner like this. Yeah, I really wasn't expecting a barn burner either. I was kind of expecting NCSU to, to maybe walk away with it, but AM is proving that, you know, they have what it takes to compete on Coastline. That, you know, that Coastline game versus Akron might have just been a fluke because everyone knows how good Akron is at Coastline. It is their playgrounds. AM, though, they want to win this match. They want to make it through this playoff round into those quarterfinals. And they're willing to take down one of the top dogs in NCSU to do it. NCSU, they have their full lineup here. They have all five starters. 
but is it going to be enough to try to take down this hungry Aggie team? That's the question. They're three rounds away from winning this out, but so is AM. At the very end of the day, it's going to come down to who can click some more heads. Who is going to be the better team at the end of the night? I mean, yeah, Sorry. at the end of the day, you know, like you said, A&M, they haven't been here in a while. NCSU, they're playing extremely well, and they've, you know, they've made their way to a lot of, you know, big playoff events throughout the last season or so. And now they're looking to make it one more if they can win this match. But here comes the rush in from NCSU, from A&M, and they're going to take out Drew. So it's an opening pick in the first 45 seconds coming out for A&M. Great roam clear, great utility with that lion skin from Pod. He's actually already used two of them. I didn't even realize when he used the first one, but the second one came out there. But a tray is going to come out, I guess, from that top wall onto Dow, but it's not going to be confirmed as that one panel has been soft and opened up. That's very interesting. You don't see that too often, but it's not going to be a trade. It's just going to be a lot of HP taken off of Dow's bar. He's been picked up at 20 HP. And NCSU, they're still looking bad. AM is in a prime position here to take a fifth round. I I do like that kind of strategy, though. It's a bit kooky. You're right. You never really see that open, but it kind of worked out there. And if you're NC State, you're kind of reaching the bag of tricks here. You got to try and get the momentum back. We talk about, I know it's cliche to talk about momentum, but in a round based shooter like Siege, momentum can really carry you and make you do some incredible things. This Lion also being very oppressive take that we haven't really seen today i, th I believe this is the first time trying yeah to make this is a little bit worse this is the first time we've seen that line and you hear the ring of the gone six come out but taco and anarchy they're gonna pick up two and swing the man count back in their favor as the plant's gonna start going down though so some denial needs to come out Jinro, he's just gonna stick the plant he ha he's no. has the HP, but no he doesn't oh i think an impact there from anarchy came out and now it's left all of the praise in a 1v4 50 seconds left he knows this is unwinnable for him, even though he has two opponents that are lit up to, you know, half and 25 HP apiece. It's not going to be possible with the crossfires established by NCSU. So instead, he's just going to wait it out, pull that laxing special that we saw coming out from Pod uh, earlier on inside of uh, this, this matchup. I believe it was inside of Oregon, specifically when he ran up into Small Tower. You know, you know that's not really that important, but we are going to see this timeout, you know, the pseudo timeout coming out from AM just to try to figure out what went wrong in that round. Because, you know, surely you thought, you know, mid-round that this would have been an A&M an A &M win. But instead, NCSU is just going to steal it right out of the nose from NCS. Or NCSU is going to steal it right out of the nose of Texas A&M. And that's going to be round number five for NCSU. Wow, that I, if, I can't, I can't even comprehend how close that, that impact must have been. There must have been... From what I saw, that was less than half a second before that diffuser was down when that came in. That is that is a hair away from being a 4v3 with diffuser down in a site that I would argue is very tough to reclaim when the diffuser is down. <sighs> that yeah, is depending on where that we're depending on where those post plant positions are set up, it can be a very difficult retake. Not as difficult as you know what you would think, you know, outside of like constant garage. It's not that level of difficulty but it can still be a very challenging retake for any defensive lineup. But it all depends on where your players are situated when that bomb goes down. Because I don't think NCSU would have given them a, uh, a great opportunity to try to reposition themselves. So we're going to, well, we, regardless, we didn't bomb. get it to that anyways. So we're going to see that, we're, we are going to see that come out. But we are going to see the Frost come out once again here on Kitchen. We saw it last time. Frost mats didn't really come out to much avail, but we are going to see them again just in case AM forgot about them. Going to combine that 
with the Jaeger and the Lamai going to be trying to deny alongside that Aruni Gates. There's so much burn here coming on from NCSU. They want AM to waste all of their throwables here. Yeah, just trying to make it as much of a gun fest as they can. And having a, having that one flash, even just that one flash to enter a room with, you make a little confidence. Maybe you get a decent position on the flash. The Lord forbid they have to burn a drone on a gate or something like that. That is obviously the worst case scenario, but it does happen from time to time. Anarchy Trip might be looking for a big pick here early. Five to four. Still can't panic, but you're in a good state of your NC, NC State. Finally able to stop the bleeding. The timeout did work in their favor. If they win this round, they will have match point pressure, and that's going to be huge. But we'll just have to see what happens. At 2 minutes 35, it is still neutral, but something's in the air, and I feel like it's a frag fest. Yeah, you know, NCSU... In order to really win this out right, they need NC Jack and they need Drew to start stepping it up a little bit more. Drew is on that Jaeger piece, three and five. He's been very quiet so far through this game. He needs to step it up just a little bit to try to help out his team. Meanwhile, over on AM, they have three players with three or less kills. Chief and Pod, you know, two players that have been extremely potent in previous maps have not been working it. And Anarchy, he's going to take out Jinro. So, no more Yana clones, no more infinite droning and bomb down at VIP window. That's a great pick coming out for NCSU. They're going to open it off real quick, and they're, they're going to show AM that they mean business and they want this game win. That's definitely not the situation that you want to be in, and just like that, Pod oh. is going to get caught in the mat. Pod, it's the same one, too. I definitely jinxed him. Pod, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll send you a card later. And Dow going to be taken down, too. Kind of a cascade of air oh, spray is no, going to be taken down. Five. Oh, no, Chief. Oh, Lord. This guy has devolved very quickly. And NC State really putting their foot down, saying, no, you know what? We're going to come back and we're going to take this win. And barring the most inc one of the most incredible clutches I've ever seen, it looks like they'll have to go down. Might be able to get Pod up. Okay, that made me think a little bit better here, Jagged, but still a long ways to go, a lot to do. Yeah, I mean, there's a minute left, but Bomb is down, and I, th I think Drew has full control over that Bomb upstairs. Re regardless, yeah, Drew does have full control of that Bomb sitting here in this hallway. It's all left up to Pod and Chief, those two players I needed to get oh. to the scoreboard the most, and it's not going to matter. Make it a flawless round to boot for NCSU, and that is match point series point here for them. Oh, man. This was not the game what we were expecting, but it's coming down to the wire here. And that pressure, if you're an A&M, you I know this is going to sound incredibly difficult, but you need to pretend it doesn't exist one round at a time. We've seen that their attack has been potent and has been able to stump NC State. Right now, they're on the back foot. But, again, it's only two rounds to go into overtime, which... They will be on defense. We saw them get a few rounds on defense, maybe a little bit less, but if we'll get there to that point, two rounds isn't impossible. A sledge is going to be picked off to some mystery operator. Is it knock? Probably not. I'm still holding out hope, though. It's going to be Ying. Good pick, but this is it. This is for all the marbles. There's no more falling back. There's no more backup plans if you're a and Jagged. This is it. Yeah, it's do or die here for the Aggies. They have to make something work, and they're going to bring the Ying out to try to make it work. We saw how potent that operator can be inside of Villa and Oregon, to be honest. When we saw, you know, AM went for that freezer rush with those Candelas, they made the round work in their favor, and they were able to start clawing that round back. One that maybe necessarily shouldn't have gone in their way at the beginning, but they made it work, and they allowed themselves to just fly through the defense that NCSU had structured up in that basement. We're going to see, is it going to work two times? It's a completely different map with a completely different bomb site. Uh, I know maybe that setup doesn't work. So we're going, to, we're going to figure out if that's going to be the case. NTSU though, they're looking real hot. They're looking red hot here tonight. They're one round away from a series win and a date with Akron in the round of eight, the quarterfinals. It'll be real interesting to say the least. You know, as our jobs as casters are to come up with the right words, but in situations like this, I find it hard sometimes to come up with the words. I mean, 
What more is there to say? Everyone watching knows that this is it. Like, there is a playoff berth on the line, and just oh. like that, Taco's gonna absolutely decapitate Chief. Wow. Oh, but it's gonna be equalized a little bit, okay. Great shot, though. Four to four, two minutes left. Finally, of trying to put a little bit of pressure on the map here. Oh, he's got tan attachment color. Okay, everything's gonna work out, ladies and gentlemen. Everything should turn out fine. Oh, Drew, though, he's up inside of Aqua, and he's gonna open the hatch to start scaring the players of AM. Here comes General. I don't think he's aware of. No! Oh, no. Taco's gonna find a second pick onto the Thermite, and that's bombed down inside of CCTV. Praise on this window, and Dow's in a, in a Banshee. Going for the swing, but oh, no, no. Anarchy is going to win it. If two kills left, and he's going to get one. No, Taco, he whiffs on the shot, but so does Pod. Oh. Making a triple for, for Taco. All left at the praise on the yin. We've seen him do it before. He's going to have to go big here. He has 12 kills so far, but he has to find four. Is he going to find one? No, he misses the head of the smoke, and here comes Taco through the smoke. But Praise hears it. Taco's at low HP. This is still doable with half the round left to go. But Praise is in a, between a rock and a hard place. The bomb is down. He has to cross this breach here in order to pick it up. Is it going to be doable? He has no one left on this first floor inside of office. But the smoke's going to burn by the ADS. You can see the ADS. Shoot it, please. Drew from oh, no. He sees the oh, foot. No. He's going to take out 30 of his eight, out of 30 HP. Candelas go out. Praise knows this is hopeless. He's going to push into the bomb site and be taken out by NC Jack. That's a game for NCSU. And they've scored their second rematch with Akron. Got to give a round of applause there, Jagged. That was an absolute thriller, and I don't think many people expected it to come out like this, going all the way to the third map. And just like that, we it really looks like everything was going AM's way, but that break, NC State, they were the better team on average today. You could see it. I mean, look at those performances, 14, 10, 11, three people with double-digit kills. Mad props to them. You have to give them mad props. They played great today, but have to give mad respect to AM. And I think NC State, when they came in, they weren't expecting this three game real barn burner at the end. That's why you watch Siege people that for stuff like that. Great series. Yeah, I mean, I don't think anyone's coming into this game expecting AM to take it to three maps, to be honest. Nothing against them. They, you know, but NCSU is typically just a better caliber team than, uh, than most teams really are inside of Collegiate. You know, but AM, you know, they prove that they have what it takes to tango with those top dogs, bringing us to three maps and almost, you know, almost being able to bring us to overtime there on that last map. It could have been a real barn burner, almost running the full gauntlet there on coastline. But at the end of the day, NC State played so well. I mean, AM played extremely well too, especially on Oregon. They played they played to their strengths really uh when it came down to it. But NC State, they took Villa in a 7-2 fashion and they took I mean, they, they took Coastline in a 7-4 fashion with those last few rounds being oh so dominant. Played extremely well tonight. I mean, a, a great series coming up from them. You love to see it. And if, honestly, if this is a, a like a qualifying round for the playoffs, oh man, I, I cannot imagine what semis and finals is going to be like if the qualifying games are coming out like this. NC State, they were just better on the day, though. You know, I think about how many times they got those early picks, and usually when they did get those early picks, they're great refragging potential. They're great roaming. They're great knowledge. They're great intelligence of the game. They took those advantage and they capitalized more. I think that's really what burdened AM today, if I'm being completely honest. How many times did we see them get that early pick or have numbers, and it crumpled? Happened a couple times that I can remember, and that might have really done the difference, but... Got to give props to NC State. Good on them. Great win. I mean, yeah, but at the end of the day, uh, NC State was able to work with those man disadvantages, and they were able to pull rounds back in their favor that, you know, honestly shouldn't have really gone their way. There were so many rounds where that was the case. I mean, a and m would get up in, in man count on multiple rounds, and then at the you know those last 20 seconds, NC State would flood, you know, would flood the bomb site and just pick up kill after kill, racking up that scoreboard. And then all of a sudden you, you see a, a 2v4 turn into a 2v0 as you know NCSU just picks off every last person and wins a round that they you know they definitely weren't in a position to win. Yeah, for sure. And I love to see that every player contributed. You know, we talked about those first two games where Taco was so dominant. Like he was just taking space. He was like, I'm that ash. I'm gonna walk in, I'm gonna get picks, I'm gonna take these areas. And then he had a bit of a lull or a bit of a lesser game in the third game, but other players stepped up and played those great games. And I think when you're talking about a great team, 
even when one person who was playing great falls off, the other teams are the other players are there to really elevate them up. And on average, the NC State player on average was able to just make more plays than the A and M ones. And it's not a knock against A and M; they play great, but sometimes it turns out that way. Yeah, I mean NCSU they played better at the end of the day, but it does look like we have our interview ready. So we're going to be interviewing Taco from mm-hmm. NCSU. Taco, tell me how you're feeling after that match. Hello, Taco. How are you? How are you doing? I man, I'm doing. I'm doing phenomenal. How are you guys doing today? I am feeling extremely well. It was an extremely great series to watch. Y'all, y'all, I mean, y'all played fight magnificent. Jagged, please. You're too kind. I I appreciate it. I mean, just, I mean credit's got to give. You know, I got to give credit where credit is due. I mean, so you know, after winning this game, you you've scored a uh, a date with Akron in the in the in the quarterfinals here. You know. You, you, you're going to be playing them now on Wednesday in the uh, the CEA finals. I don't know if, you know, because this was kind of happening while y'all were playing, but the uh, the result of the, the lower bracket final in CEA was, was overturned. Mm-hmm. So now you have two matches with Akron back-to-back, one CEA grand final, one CR6 quarterfinal. How are, how are y'all going to be preparing going into that? Uh, you know, I think uh, we just kind of gotten to a point where we're comfortable playing our game, no matter who it's against. Uh, You know, this, I would say like last two semesters uh, with me being uh, on the A team, I've played Akron twice. Uh, One time they spanked us, one time we spanked them. So, uh, you know, I'm going to be looking forward to uh, getting two more cracks at them, especially uh, in these high stakes environments. That being said, um, I don't think our our preparation is going to be anything beyond normal, you know, just making sure that we're staying sharp, knowing what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, Other than that, I think it's just kind of business as usual on our end. Yeah, I mean, perfectly reasonable. I mean, if you're comfortable with how y'all are playing and you know what it takes to defeat a team of that caliber, I mean, because y'all definitely are a team of that same caliber. We've seen it time and time again from y'all. I mean, I'm, I, all I have to say is I'm just excited for, for those matches coming up. I'd definitely be sure for everyone to kind of tune into those and, and see some of the top dogs of the college scene come in. Connor, Connor, what, what you got for this man? All right, Taco, congratulations on your big win. I would just oh, like to say when you were playing those, those first two games on Ash were some of the most pinnacle fine displays of Ash play I've ever seen. So I'd like to pick your brain a little bit mm-hmm. for when you were just popping off there and you're having, you're feeling good and, they're saying, all right, Taco, go out and get us this area of the map. What was going through your mind? Mm-hmm. Con man, uh, I hate to disappoint, but when you say you're going to pick my brain, you see, when I when I get on the R4C, when I get behind that R4C and I'm looking <laughs> down that hollow, there's really not a lot going on between these ears, I'm going to be honest. Uh, I'm just kind of relying on on, uh, on my boys to kind of make my decisions for me. You know, they're giving me that intel, giving me the information. And I'm just kind of going and a lot of times shooting people in the back, if I'm being honest, I feel like I got lucky with a lot of those gunfights. Uh, but that being said, we were able to find success. And I feel like that just kind of snowballed into a, a really dominant attacking half, especially on that first map where just, you know, you saw the pace that we came out with in the first round where they were a little bit sloppy holding that kitchen site that we were able to take advantage of that kind of gave us that confidence going forward. That's like, okay, if we just, you know, put the pedal to the metal against these guys they might not be able to keep up and uh and that's that's how that map worked out good to hear it i got one more question for you of course when in that 2v1 at the end of the round when you jumped over the pot for the drop shot what was going through your mind i am so heartbroken that i was not able to win that round i mean we got we got the map either way but it it was a 4v1 and man it would have looked stellar in a montage con man i'm not gonna i'm not gonna sit here and lie to you i'm not gonna be that kind of guy uh that being said um i will say that i was a bit uh curious of his decision to hop over the balcony or hop over the staircase to come after me i i remember verbally saying like what is that what is that guy doing because in a 2v1 like that you can get that plant down for free especially when i have one staircase to come up of um but you know i was i was thankful that he gave me that free kill and unfortunately the 6 hp just wasn't enough and uh dow you know all credit to him he had himself a really good uh third map there but um he was able to get that one, unfortunately. All right. Well, congratulations, Taco. You played great, and you guys, at the end of the day, were the better team. You could tell. It's almost like you play the game together all the time or something. Mm-hmm. Great communication. Yeah. It was a pleasure to watch you, and good luck in your next few games. I appreciate yeah. it.
I'm gonna give I'll give you this 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 you know this minute or so here. To, uh, I mean, the floor is yours. I mean, you have been in these interviews before. You you know how it goes. Mm-hmm, shout, of course. Shout out shout out shout out everyone you need to shout hey, out. First of all, let me just go ahead and say, Jagged new microphone. You're sounding phenomenal. You know, sounding as good as you look. Good work there. Um, uh, anyways, shout out to uh, Cabana Boy. Shout out to Shell Bell. You know, repping it in the chat. I appreciate you guys for coming out, keeping uh, keeping our board anarchy grounded. I mean. The, the, the people raised them. So, you know, everything that you see on the battlefield out there, you got to thank those two. So I'm never going to go a day without thanking Cabana Boy and Shell Bell for all you guys do, especially in giving me that, uh, that backpack to, to ride in in the form of Grant. Um, other than that, once again, shout out to Kanye West. I hope Yeezys are doing well. I'm sure that's a lot of pressure on you. So I want to make sure that you're always doing well, keeping you in my thoughts. Shout out to the team. Shout out to CDAPS. He was able to come in for a little bit and just kind of keep our heads straight before we had to go do an SCS cast. So I appreciate him taking the time out of his day to come and uh, help us. Uh, but other than that, uh, I said Kanye. That's, that's pretty much about it. As long as I get Kanye, I'm pretty good. Hey, man. Well, congratulations on the win. I look forward to casting y'all on Wednesday in your CEA Grand Finals match versus Akron. And then we'll have to see who's end up casting your game versus Akron here in CR6. Regardless, it should be a couple of really good games. So I look forward to seeing y'all in your next few matches, man. Good luck. I appreciate it. Have a good one. All right. That's going to do it here for us tonight at Collegiate R6. We had a banger of a matchup here tonight. NC State taking a 2-1 victory over the A&M Aggies down here in Texas. Overall, just a, a great match. It, you know, maps 1 and 2 were, were pretty dominant towards one team, but that map 3 sure almost was a, was quite the barn burner, to be honest. Oh, yeah, and you love to see it. And if this is a bit of foreshadowing, like I said earlier, of what's to come, I'm going to be, my eyes are going to be glued to my monitor more than they already are. Terrible sleep schedule as is. It's about to get ever even worse, but I'd like to thank you, Jagged, so much for being my co-cast today. It was so much fun to cast with you. I hope you can do it again. And uh, fortunately for tonight, that's going to be us, but we'll have more Siege very soon. Yep. Good night, y'all.
say you say it like that If I hate you then find someone new Baby but you know I never will No So I choke you down just like a Thank you.